you, 15 minutes late. That's got to be a record. It's been a while since we've been only 15 minutes late. Ah, that's nothing. 18 minutes. Ah, fuck, we blew it. May as well just switch it off now. How you doing, folks? Same here with the usual TAB crew we have. Mr. Randall K, the D, and Stu, our interloper. <laughs> How you doing, guys? Hello. Hey, well, thank you. Magical. In a mic. And today we are going to give this snake oil a proper go. Really simple game, basically. Each one of these, that's the stream, that's not my play deck. That's going to cause all sorts of things to fuck up. Let's put that right <laughs> back where it was. <laughs> Good thing I you're not responsible game. for the Dee's anonymity. <laughs> so, on the blue cards you have what is essentially a profession. Lunch lady, my god. <laughs> that shit again, shuffle the fuck out of those. <laughs> I'm guessing I didn't shuffle these cards. So you pick a profession, everyone else has a bunch of cards. It's supposed to be six. We're doing eight because we cheat. <laughs> you pick two of those cards and try and pick an implement, uh, an item of something that would be of use to, in this case, a lunch lady. And if you can't think of anything that's actually going to be any use to them, just make up some bullshit and sell that thing as hard as you can. It'll make sense once we start playing. Honest. Hopefully. Yeah. First of all, let's shuffle the fuck out of these. Shuffle like a motherfucker! And the white ones. Which I have already dished out to people. Oh, that could... Ah, uh, interesting. Do we okay. Pick, do we need to just pick Cuban middle of the table or that can that fuck off? This big tube can indeed not fuck off. Put that back or I'll break your fingers, virtual or otherwise. I'll put it there. I can't see much for it. It's huge. Bye. Thank you. That big, that big cube. Can everybody see that big cube? Yes. That big yes. cube with two minutes on it. Yes. In order to make this game actually more functionable, because we all talk like complete and utter bastards for hours upon end. Ah, reporting. You have two minutes to make your to make your case. Okay, so it takes two minutes quite high, actually. Mm -hmm. It takes two minutes just to think stuff up. If you can, no, what, oh, you, get, you get you've got that time to actually pick your cards and think of what you're doing. But when oh, you're sorry. talking, you have two minutes, two minutes to come up with bullshit. Ah, okay. <laughs> so, so at what point do you hit the start the clock? At what point? Do start, at the point where do you start talking? Okay. Cool. <laughs> Otherwise, it would be kind of an inaccurate two minutes. I, I just them, I guess. <laughs> up yours. <laughs> Sweet Moses. What the fuck are what you are doing? You? I don't know what I'm doing. Don't don't get fucking don't get tattooed with me. I don't know what the fuck's happening. Have a card. Right, Stu, you can go first. Pick a blue card. Okay. Hopefully, it won't say lunch lady. If it does, that'd be funny. And of course, the reason I'm picking you is... <laughs> nice. The reason I'm picking you is, well, we're going clockwise, so we've got D and then K before I need to actually think up what we're going to say. So yeah, the, uh, the card in the middle says President. President of what, though? Well, that's for you to pitch your product at. Well, exactly. I suppose you could... Could be the, the president of Tim Muck too, yes. president of America. Yes, and this being a, an American made game, probably, America, uh, probably president of the US. If you wish to take it somewhere else, well, the card just says president, so you know. President of the online you. bowling committee for pensioners. There you go. <laughs> we have chat, guys. Zarak, Native J, how you doing, buddies? <laughs> it's just like watching the presidential debate only debate only you guys make more sense <laughs> we, are, we are so going to prove that wrong okay one thing i will anyway. say is we're definitely more eloquent hmm. yeah these cars look familiar i really didn't shuffle this the last time we played either did i i've got great cuts I'm pretty sure you've got the upgraded version of the uh, bitch device from last time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
I have cards. Okay. How are we? How are we doing? Ah, flip it first, Dave, before you pull it out. Ladies. <laughs> <laughs> Barak, you're doing better, son. Good to hear, buddy. Got to keep on keeping on, man. Got to keep on keeping on. Oh no, Eddie the Destroyer, try to get in. Are we go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking like a tiny, hairy Drax. Yeah, uh, well, I mean, it's not the internet without a cat just impeding in it somewhere. Well, you said it. Peeing on it somewhere? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah, I think someone spiked my Twix last week. <laughs> 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 All right, are we ready to go? Let's go for it. I wouldn't say good. <laughs> Mr. D, you have two minutes starting. So, the biggest, most commonest challenge that any president has got is, is making decisions from whether or not to invade a country to start a war or whether or not whether or not to go and bang some aid within the administration. So, what I've come up with is a way, think, think about the, the kind of previous inventions such as the Magic 8 Ball. Famous inventions throughout our past that has helped all of us, no matter where you are in life, with decision making, key decision making. So something that will allow a president to make any of these key decisions is of course the desire finger. So the desire finger is there. Don't know whether or not you want to push the button to fire a missile. Hover that finger over the button and see what that desire finger tells you. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to test uh, how, how well done a uh, cake is, <laughs> use the desire finger. And if you like the Monica Lewinsky way of life, don't know whether or not you want to go down that route or you want a bit of the first lady, use the desire finger. The choice, the only choice for the president. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Oh no, you're not getting that either. <laughs> what are the two main concerns of a president? <laughs> now, some might say the economy. Some might say, you know, um, decision making. <clears throat> decision making. <laughs> employment. Other people might say vocabulary. Um, but it depends what president you're speaking about, of course. Um, there could also be the tactile access to pussy, but that's another conversation altogether. The one thing that is always going to be a problem for a president is the need for protection, the ability to protect yourself, not only from, you know, possible assassination, but also your identity to hide yourself under. But also, even though you have to sometimes hide where you are or you might have to protect yourself, it doesn't mean you can't have some fun. So what if you wanted to use your sexual prowess with the ladies? You know, that way you just... You just hit on them, and sometimes you just grab them by the pussy, for example. Uh, as a your finger. Well, that's a very good, a very good product. But the, the desire finger is something that people say he's got a desire finger. He's got to be a president. That makes you a target. What you need is something that can protect you and give you all the pleasure you need. And for that, you need a fuck cape. You can hide under it. You can fuck somebody under it. Nobody knows. They don't even know you're the president. So even if you get caught, it's just a guy in a cape fucking some lassie, magic, or some guy. What he's into. So I recommend you try out the fuck cake. Guess I could do it, Sean Lewis. <laughs> I've got no card. The <laughs> <laughs> your finger. Can I just point out the fact? Can I just point out the fact that this goes to show exactly what our brains trigger when we hear president now? <laughs> Um, and also, I would like to add to the rebuttal stage, can we, because of these constant singing here, can we add to the rebuttal stage that if you haven't got a rebuttal, you can just try and pitch it by making a theme tune up? <laughs> Say your finger! I'm, I want to buy it now, I'm sorry, I didn't want my product! <laughs> <laughs> I 
Hey, what was that last time? I'm just going to completely create a new product and just fuck whatever I say. You're a bad loser, sir. (laughs) Everyone's a bad loser when you change the entire game. Clarification, you did say election, didn't you? Zane, 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 sorry to interrupt the guys in chat saying they cannot hear you. Yep. That's odd to happen mid sesh. I'm verifying if they can hear. They can't hear you, but I think they can hear us. Poor bastards. God, God. God damn it, man! How are we doing now? Yeah. Oh, there you go. Let's mic check that. <laughs> the I didn't even notice there. I was looking at your little screen there, and I saw, I didn't realise that was your microphone on its stand. I genuinely thought you were just sitting doing this. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, his fingers are a lot squarer than I remember. That's also quite rude. You hear me now? Hear me now. Yes, hear me now. You are back. <laughs> Zarak has confirmed. Thank you, technical support. Thank you, Z. <laughs> okay. So what were you saying exactly? For the boys and girls playing at home, what I was saying is... <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be a fun one to edit. I was, what I was saying is, I have no idea how to work this clock. Mr. President, in this day and age, on the plus side, I get a second go at this. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I'm doing that. There are two things that seem to matter, uh, to matter most as far as the presidency is concerned at this time. One of those things is security. The other would appear to be the fairer sex. Absolutely, to keep your country secure. If there is one thing you need, it is missiles. Lots of missiles. <laughs> Big fuck off missiles. I know where this that's is going. How, that, that is how you're going to keep this this great nation of yours safe. And the world, for that matter. However, there is a, a lingering problem out there. I don't know if you've noticed, sir. But, um... See, there, there seems to be a few issues with it. The... Um... Whether it be Step carefully, mate. Of, whether it be leaks <laughs> of tapes coming out before uh, almost stopping you getting elected in the first place, which to be frank was absolutely ridiculous, should never have happened, um, or mass rallies seen all over the world, the biggest turnout for any women's rally ever any, anywhere in the known world, just after you got elected. So I mean, it is safe to say that you're having issues with the fairer sex. I have a solution for you. Not only do we have a missile, we have a missile that is scientifically engineered to only go for <laughs> problem solved right there. I think. Uh, wow. <laughs> do I have to say this particular product is probably only specific to this particular president, but you know, <laughs> I'm sure they would find it very handy. Uh, Do we have any rebuttals on the table? I think we've all went down the... Again, the only thing I'm going to say is not even a product defence, but I'm just going to say it's very clear what we think when we hear about this president. <laughs> Am I the only one here that, uh, the, whose, whose product solely doesn't rely on the gutter thinking? I mean, first of all, everybody's got... every guy has got a pussy missile so i mean why you're wanting to sell me another one 
quite frankly, this one annoys me from time to time. So I did me to the fuck. <laughs> and a fuck cape. A fuck cape. What the fuck is a fuck cape? I'm still I don't trying know what you tell me. What a fuck cape is. The problem is with both of your products, guys, they ain't shit without what the one key ingredient is in the first place, and that is the desire finger. Desire finger. <laughs> All right, well, on the back of that, yes, the fuck game does sound obtuse, but that's because all original free thinker ideas often sound unusual and untoward when you first kind of discover it. You go, I don't understand it, but you can imagine, you can hide under the cape. Nobody knows you're the president, you can get your fuck on. Or you could fuck the cape if you want, it's got all that functionality. You can also decide that, do you know what? I'm safe, I'm defended, nobody knows who I am, and I can get my fuck on. Plus, plus, it's going to lure women because I'm going, who's that mysterious stranger under the cape? I think I want to be back that kind of fabric glory hole action. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> What's your cape made of? Whatever you desire. Good answer. Yeah. I, I, I see that. Let me correct that. Um, there's, we do it in cotton and polyester. <laughs> <laughs> Zane? I have no rebuttals. I have no re no needs for rebuttals. The Pussy Missile, your number one needs for all instances, both domestic and international. <laughs> awesome. Uh, adjudicator, uh, call it. There is, there is absolutely um, no way a big misogynistic prick like yourself does not want a Pussy Missile. I'm not sure if that helps my claim or not, but you know, it's... So you're talking to me as a president? My, oh, sorry, Mr. President. <laughs> sorry. Jay, you're a... Uh, you are you suggesting that our, our right honourable friend does not indeed have his own pussy missile? <laughs> See, you seem to be thinking for some reason that this is some sort of euphemism for a penis. This is an actual fuck-off missile that only targets pussy. <laughs> Sounds like the same descriptor to me still. <laughs> Uh, in that case, I would suggest that you have a similar intellect and some and somewhat of the level of our president right now. But you know, <laughs> there you go. Again, with all due respect, Mr. President, sir. <laughs> well, <laughs> Stu, you need to do a, you need to do a Trump yeah, impression a small penis. now. Hey, the, the, the pussy missile. I got bored with the presentation of it. I, I didn't care where you're going with that. And it just bored the tits off me. So I, I, won't, I won't be purchasing that, I'm afraid. Um, the, the, the fuck cape just sounds like a, a grotty old man flasher's Mac. Yep. And I've never heard of... You met president? Women, <laughs> I've never heard of any women coming near anybody in a flasher Mac. That says... Ugh. You've not been out in a night in the town with me, sir. <laughs> Clearly it's the wrong kind of Max. Standard garb. <laughs> <laughs> However, the desire finders now got me going. Um, finger desire. Da, 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 Finger so, desire. <laughs> for, for that reason. You missed a trick there. <laughs> uh, the, the desire finger has the win in this case because that tune's now just there and it's funny. Desire finger. Right. So, congratulations. Right. Okay, what we'll do is you keep a hold of that particular card, Mr. D, and we'll count up at the end of the night. Who's well, got okay. the most cards? I could, right? we can access the most shall win. I believe that's in the official rules. I just never fucking always always keep forgetting about it. Try to shuffle these fucking things like a bell end and it's not happening. Okay, hey. so yeah, another two cards. Um, that's the pussy missile. Um. Uh, one thing I will point out to our viewers at this point in time that if you're going to watch this video and you're easily offended it's probably best Please. not to watch this video I may have left this warning a bit too late oops <laughs> but you know there you go it's, it's out there now um, well I tweeted it and I tweeted it saying um, it's going to be darker than Russell Brand humping a garbage can on collection day so you know <laughs> that should cover us Fucking hell, Sesame Street just got weird then. <laughs> <laughs> Oscar the Grouch is furious. <laughs> Wednesday's usually jizz day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, picking up or dropping off? <laughs> Better both, my man. Better both. Right, ladies and gentlemen, I am a teacher. What have you got to sell me? 
Oh fuck. Our okay. teacher. Oh fuck. Okay. Um I have got fucking nothing at all. Um I've got a perfect thing if you're a Jedi, but fuck. <laughs> you could you could be a Jedi teacher, <laughs> you don't know. Ah, no, that wouldn't work. Absolutely works. Well, I mean, it works until Anakin goes in and fucks up your classroom, but you know. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Fuck it. I'll go. I'll go with Mr. that. Mister uh, Mister Skywalker is not the best fucking stand-in teacher. Let's put it that way. <laughs> right. Let's go. Away. So my good morning, is... Mister Skywalker. <laughs> Don't speak to me. <laughs> oh, Zarak is back with an unspeak Twix. Excellent. Awesome. Right, mine's a shit, but it actually would make sense if you were an actual teacher. And since, I, and since I don't know if you actually heard me earlier on, Zarak, since my mic was playing up, glad to hear you feeling better, buddy. Okay. All right, two so, counts out. Everybody ready to go? We are yeah. Indeed. Okay, I invite Mr. Key. All right, Still so, okay, you're a teacher. Everybody's thinking, oh, what, what can we do with, about the kids? What can we do about the homework? What can we do about our paperwork? You're a teacher. If you're a real teacher, that's not your priority. If any of you guys know any teachers, and as you, Mr. D, are a teacher, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about when I say you need more than just office supplies to get by in your day. You sit there all day every day and you're thinking, I worry about the welfare of these kids and I worry about the school budget. But what you worry about more than anything else is where the fuck am I going to get my next gen from? Every teacher I've ever met will celebrate massively at the start of the summer by having a hangover that lasts most of the summer. Um, and they love just to fucking cut loose. And do you know what? I often thought, that's a bit crazy. Those people are responsible for kids. But then I thought, yeah, they're responsible for kids. That's exactly why you do that. So what the hell do you do? You can't, you're not allowed to have booze on site. You're not allowed to have booze in your drawer. So what I suggest you buy is one of our amazing cold vans. You leave it in the car park, it drives you to school every morning. In the back, you've got all the booze you can fucking handle. Not only do you look like the coolest bugger in this playground, because you can just sit in that car park, get booze. If it's a high school, you can also go sell some booze to the kids. Extra pin money, result. And then eventually you can go to your colleagues and say, it's Friday afternoon, does anyone want to come out to my cold van? And they, all of a sudden you're the goddamn king of the staff room. I rest my case. Thank you, Mr. Key. Zane? With a whole thought of thanks to spare. That's fucking efficiency right there. <laughs> okay. I told you so... had no cards. <laughs> Didn't even get my old chart with that shit. That was just real. <laughs> 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 Moving on. I can't fight. Oh, you hit the white bit. There we go. So, Mr. Teacher, I believe it is perfectly fair to say that teachers pretty much have a, a somewhat similar problem to, oh, let me think, uh, maybe a, a lunch lady. I think it's safe <laughs> to say that one of the primary problems that you would have in life is not dealing with those kids who are perfectly well behaved. It's not dealing with those kids who are quite happily handling their homework. It's dealing with all those other kids. Uh, all, all those other kids. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's dealing with those those bitches. Those absolute wee fucking bitches. Why do I keep saying bitches? Because, yeah, you guessed it. We need something that can deal with those bitches. Now, unlike the dinner lady, I think it needs to be something a bit more restrained for a teacher, you know. I don't think you want like to go in there with a, I don't <laughs> think you want to go in there with a bitch gun and just absolutely shoot the fuck out of everybody. Um, I'm going to have to put up subtitles, say, see previous video for this thing actually <laughs> anybody watching right now, but you know, we'll do that later. What you're going to need is something just to subdue them. Something that's just going to, you know, all them quieting them down. I give you it's essentially a big sleep, a big sleep that you can knock them over the head with, and that will put them into a bitch nap. <laughs> <laughs> they a will bitch just nap. They will just quite quietly and happily sleep at their desks 
Um, maybe requiring some first aid at the end of the at the end of the classroom. But you know, that's that's that's. I mean, that's something. Problem at that point, the bell's rung. So, <laughs> yes, with five seconds to go, I give you the bitch nap. <laughs> Thank you very this much. This is Dave. really obtuse tonight, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> we're oh, we're struggling just, with the cards. It's about to get worse. Georgie Vargas, <laughs> how you doing, buddy? Okay, okay, okay. I just need to think of this timer. So, my take on you being a teacher is in the Star Wars universe. And as we know, we have the two sides. You can either be a Jedi teacher or you can be the Master and the Sith. So for this, because they have such the cool toys, the Empire is clearly the teacher that you are part of here. But obviously you can't go out and fly anything, you can't go out and, um, you know, butcher anything down because you're a teacher, you, you're there to learn. So instead of a, a lightsaber and all these really cool things, I would like to present you with the Thai dildo. It's stealthy. <laughs> How's Thai spelt? Can I just check? All right, okay. Sorry, I wasn't sure if it was T H A I. I wouldn't have went for that if it was Star Wars. Do you remember my, my spiel here? <laughs> it's stealthy. It's got enough um, force in it that you can give those pupils a good slap in the head. Uh, and then, <laughs> oh, gosh, you... I think you're using dildos, right? <laughs> and then, should you wish to use it yourself, you've got the double pleasure. You know, it's stealthy. It's fast. It'll give you all the all the exhilaration you could ever want. <laughs> um, it's not a tool for everything, and that's why you should have one. <laughs> I did warn you, it was poor, poor, <laughs> poor. None of us are having a stellar <laughs> occasion. I just tried to re rebrand the fucking ice cream vans. So I wouldn't worry about it. It's a slow start. I'm sure we'll get there. <laughs> Uh, I, I, again, rebuttals, please, so I can try and think of something. <laughs> <laughs> um, rebuttals. Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm sorry, but I mean, a, a cold fan. It's. So I'll just I, I just start a cool box on wheels. Yeah, but you can also get to work in it, so you don't need to invest in something that kind of. Remember, you're going to be most likely drinking on recess, lunch, and end of the day. A cool box by the time the end of the day comes, that's not going to be up to much. What yeah. you want is a cool van because not only does that, but you can also drink drive home with a fresh one at the back. Magic. I mean, I am really, it? I'm really glad that I don't remember my art teacher's name because I am probably about to be liable slander right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure a, a small fridge in the in back cupboards was pretty much back there because we never saw. Him. <laughs> And I mean, oh. you're, you're basically wanting to go and... Here's some paint, get on with it, bitch. You're, you're so, trying to lure kids to a van. I mean, Jesus. I, I know teachers I, are iffy, but come on, that's a bit much. But you're also missing I, the opportunity here for... I'm not, the, yeah, I'm not, saying a, I'm not saying a cold van's a particularly bad product. I'm saying it's a particularly premiered, over-engineered product. In your back room. Especially when you're going to have to go out and leave the class unattended. Aye, but you Which, don't. You can't have well, booze on site. You'd lose your job in a heartbeat. You've got your booze in your van. That's your personal property. They need a warrant to search it. Job once done. again, not to slander a certain art, te art teacher, but that was not my experience. Um, <laughs> as far as I I'll mean, be honest, far... you're old as fuck, and that was a long time ago. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's true. He's probably dead. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, yeah. To be fair, you just with the cold van, you're going to end up in this permanent cycle. You're going. Oh, isn't that bike? Shut the fuck up and let me <laughs> rebut. Your class is going to be undetended. Your kids, you're going to come back in. You're going to see how much rowdy they've got, which is going to put you into a fit of despair, which means you're going to have to go back out to the van to get more drink, which is means the kids are undetended for longer. And it's just going to go on and on and on and on. And you're going to end up putting a rope inside, hanging up inside that cold van. I don't think that's the way you want to go. As Alternatively, tied... when you've had a few drinks, just get your tie dough, don't give them a good slap. <laughs> as, as for a... It's a win-win situation. Yeah. Right, as children, tie, I think it's time see... you settle down and let the teacher speak now. <laughs> yes, Mr. D. I'm going to, I'm going to say, if you take a tie dough into school, you're going to be an ex-teacher. <laughs> it comes in white and black. Children. So... 
I've listened to all the arguments, and initially I was thinking the cold van was far too practical and useful to win anything at this game. Um, but then I kind of listened to bitch nap, and as much as the the bitch nap as an end result is something I would I would kind of dearly welcome. Usually, any time between the hours of nine and three, half three, <clears throat> it's not you're not selling a bitch nap. You need something to actually deliver that bitch nap. That makes sense. I told you that. <laughs> so what I was thinking is when the rather inappropriately Ty Dildo uh, came along, I was thinking, okay, I've got all the fun of the Ty Dildo that was sold by Soto there, but he could also provide the bitch nap. So that could be used. So there's a kind of two in one. So bitch nap went out the window straight away as a result of that because the Ty Dildos is kind of selling everything at that point. And then I thought, hang on. The Alan the patent motherfucker, he is not getting his hands anywhere near my bitch nap. <laughs> and then I thought, the cold van, that's going to be full of bottles. I like a drink. I like a drive. The bitch van, sorry, the cold van is also going to give me dildo pleasures as well, if I wish. Dildo shaped objects. And yes, we have ice lollies. And more ways than one will also give the children and possibly myself as many bitch naps as we possibly want. <laughs> So as much as it, and to start off with being the most boring product <laughs> on the table, it actually fulfills everybody else's delivery as well. So there's only one winner. It's the cold van. Yay! <laughs> Punnies for gonna, everybody else. Punnies. I am going to assault you with a tie dildo. <laughs> See if that comes out as a bizarre sex toy product with the Star Wars thing. I, I, you've heard it here today, all right? <laughs> I've got YouTube timestamps are good. Jesus, my cards are getting worse and worse and worse. I think we should have a rule that we're allowed to discard all cards because my cards are getting fucking terrible here. <laughs> right. Uh, why did I get teacher again? All oh, right, that's my spare card. Okay, I didn't realize that. That's my win card. That's your, that's your win card. Thanks, dude. Right. <coughs> I'm an alien. You're an oh, alien. I'm an illegal alien. alien. Oh. Hey. Because she's in like contemporary music. <laughs> I could use that tie dildo right now. My mic keeps <laughs> I've got something really, really corny. Is this going it's to be really general shit? In general, on this game, or <laughs> in general, but in this game mostly, it's going to be really, really grim. And I expect anyone in the the chat room to go. That's that's really grim. <laughs> what the fuck. I think we do have a, I think you've got, maybe we've got like one opportunity to flip all your cards out or maybe two, something like that. Because these, the cards I've got are absolute beef. These are pretty bad, that's to be said. Like Stu's in there already, that's pretty good. That's generally really corny. It's... <gasps> oh, I've got nothing. How much time do I have, i.e. can I go and grab a drink? <laughs> I'm going to because you guys are still picking cards. <laughs> <laughs> Native J, we could help Zane choose, perhaps. Sounds like a good idea in theory, bud, but uh, I'm having a hard enough time making up bullshit for my own choice. <laughs> Never mind. Outside influences. <laughs> I know it's a bit... A bit non-participatory, this one, but... Uh... Hi! I got chicken! You got... Chicken! Chicken. I think these cards are the wrong way around. No, they're not. Okay. 
Are we good to go? Yep. Say that to me, Earth scum. Okay. First of all, I would just like to say that I absolutely and undeniably welcome our alien overlords. <laughs> and we'll quite happily take you to our leaders. <laughs> I am presuming, of course, that the reason you're here is to, to take over the Earth. And I do have to say, I have a nice wee product that will probably help you do that. We seem to have a, a particular problem on this planet where we like our warfare. We like having things to shoot. And if these guys come down here en masse, yeah, that, that, I mean, that's pretty much what's going to happen. And I'm not saying you guys wouldn't win. Absolutely, it's not what I'm saying. But, you know, if it's trying to enslave the human race, having to wipe out three quarters of it in order to do so, probably isn't the best way to do it. What I would say is, if you want to enslave the entire human race, I would use, well, drugs. Quite frankly, I would use lots and lots of hard drugs. <laughs> Of course, the hard part of that is they're going to catch on pretty soon as to what the hell you're, hell you're up to. So you're going to need some sort of delivery system. So I think the easiest way is for them to make it edible, make it just easy for them to, to, to actually to, to, to swallow, so to speak. Therefore, I think we need a crack delivery system, which would in this case would be the crack banana. Because <laughs> who doesn't like a good piece of fruit? These things, you just drop drop them in crates from your ship, all over the earth, people will just ravenously take up those bananas. If you want a nice drug haze, you can come down and enslave the whole lot, job done, no bother at all, not one bullet, not one bullet or laser fired. <laughs> Back banana. <laughs> These cards suck! There's <laughs> a I? sentence no one's used. Crack banana. Awesome. <laughs> Okay. Oh. That's, that's class. Um, so, as an alien, you're going to be a long way away from your family. So when you need to call home for those very special moments, there's only one thing you're going to need. And that's a space phone. <laughs> <laughs> Unlimited tariff. Your best way to keep in touch with your loved ones, wherever you are in the galaxy. Uh, that's my product. Game over. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck your speech. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Brian. Once again, he that is space phone. the space phone. He just basically went phones like for Uranus. There. Yeah. Nah, I'm pretty technical <laughs> that far. A phones for Uranus should have been amazing. <laughs> Why do we not have an alien president? <laughs> He's just uh, <laughs> bending the rules to suit him. <laughs> There's a surprise. What about if we do this? Alien teacher <laughs> president? Oh. <clears throat> What's hey. the We are honoured that you grace our little planet with your presence. I can only imagine that you've come here in peace and no hostility. Hostility? Oh my god. Hostility. Hey. How many shirts have you had? I hope you also haven't come for sales pitches, sales lessons. <laughs> <laughs> what I did want to do though, Alien President, is I wanted to give the opportunity to show you the best of what our little humble planet can offer you. I'm still at this moment in time trying to figure out what the fuck a crack banana is. <laughs> and when looking at space phone I realised how condescending that must be for someone who has flown millions and millions of miles across galaxies and universes to not have a space phone, I just think is downright sarcastic. So what I've decided to do was, like I say, I wanted to show what planet Earth has for the best offering for yourself. Why should you set up a home here? Why should you buy a timeshare? So what I'd like to give to you is the chocolate wank. <laughs> Combining Earth's two favourite most popular pastimes and passions. <laughs> I'm selling you the chocolate wank that will give you all the pleasure you will ever need and you will never want to leave our planet again. 
Welcome, Your Majesty. <laughs> okay then. Well, I mean, I think given that at least half we were at the minute mark before D actually said anything of substance, he basically his first minute of his own his speech was a, was a rebuttal. <laughs> <laughs> it's a dirty trick. Shows just how weak weak, weak that actually is. Um, <laughs> I mean, a chocolate wank sounds wonderful in theory until you need to clean up afterwards. A space phone. I mean, I've, I've, I've got to go with E. It's like, do you manage to get all this way, but somehow haven't invented some sort of telephonic device that allows you to talk to your pals and send them weird alien emojis? I, I don't buy it. Crack banana but, all but the it, way. But it's not meant for you. It's meant for the, the alien visitors when they've settled with their chocolate wanks and all the technology's flown away and dis dissipated the space phone, they still talk away to anybody in the world. In fact, even chat lines and many moons away, they could get off on their chocolate wanks. Um, so this space yeah. phone can go anywhere in the world. I'm anywhere the in the galaxy, anywhere in the solar system, anywhere in the goddamn fucking universe, it'll get you there. <laughs> These guys, these guys travelled trillions of light years in order to get here. You think they haven't invented their own phone already? Not with our frequencies, no. You're a strange man. <laughs> well, I mean, it's product for an alien race. Got to, got to have a little bit of strange ingenuity. Uh, and let's face it, we all need to phone home. <laughs> Again, in summary, what the fuck is a crack banana? I know you've got a space phone and I know you ain't have got a chocolate wank. I spent two... <laughs> Two minutes telling you exactly what a crack banana is. I've got to say, K pick quick, otherwise I'm going to eat fucking a crack banana. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, as an alien from another world, I have no genitals, so the wank doesn't appeal to me, and chocolate tastes better to me, so I don't really want a chocolate wank. Um, as for the crack banana, it does sound uh, like a appropriate method in which to enslave the human race. Um, the only problem you've got is that a large, large kind of faction of your planet and our research has discovered that there's a lot of fat folk that don't eat fruit, so that's a bad, bad mechanism. If that had been a crack burger, you'd be on a winner. But frankly, <laughs> the space phone, yes, we do have one, but the, the thing that hooked me was it's on an unlimited tariff, so that's really hard to get back where I come from, so I'm giving it to the space phone. <laughs> Yay. Oh. <laughs> that must be like the equivalent of the Nokia fucking whatever. <laughs> space 30, 33 10 or whatever. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Motorola had the, the space port and the time port, I'm sure, were the two of their phones. Um, okay. Can I ditch all my cards, please? You know what? I'm with you in that. I'm going to keep mine. Let me get in some lucky. Hey, what did you do? That's the junk pile, is it not? Yeah, where did the real cards go? I didn't touch them, they're right on top of you. You know what, your bit? Ah. <laughs> okay. Why whenever it goes wrong, does it have to go, okay, what do you the do? Cards, motherfucker? <laughs> See what happened there? I, I fucked up and immediately blamed you. I, well, but I, I think I show great management material in this particular instance. I think you do, eh? <laughs> motherfucker. Alright. You guys good? Who needs cards? My, my cards are shite. <laughs> you, you say that every round and they're, they're probably fine. I mean, we've we'll probably got a stripper coming out now, so you'll be sorted. Ah. Oh. Okay. Let's see what wonderful freaking card. Okay, what we got? What we got? What we got? Yeah, here's, there we go. And run, 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 run. That's right. a shitty one. You want to discard that one? <laughs> uh, okay. <clears throat> Don't tell you. All right. So it's gangster. Oh. Bring the rap. Gangster, huh? Okay. Why am I the shit cards are straight out? Fuck. 
Power in the money, money in the power, minute after minute, hour <laughs> after hour. Oh yeah, here we go. Fucking four white boys for Scotland going west side. This is gonna be yeah. Is it gonna be memorable? <laughs> Try to talk us to a West Side story, that's uh different. <laughs> like <laughs> Probably what I could have. Um, well we I've got fuck off. <laughs> This is fucking brutal. <clears throat> okay, how we doing? Already. One, two, three. Oh, yes. Okay. Do you... Let's go get away, man. Native Jay, does the sun shine, uh, does the sun shine in Scotland? Um. It's not yeah. more dawn, of course it fucking does. <laughs> Tomorrow it's going to be blistering. <clears throat> 24 uh, degrees. Supposedly sun's on Leith, so... 24 degrees tomorrow and the day after. Oh, you say that. Can I, can I just clarify, does Jay think we live in fucking, like, Mount Doom? <laughs> we kind of do. Pretty much. <laughs> Alright, so does this sound familiar? Yo, Franco, I thought I told you to whack that guy. Yeah, man, I tried, but I've got no room in my trunk. What do you mean you got no room in your trunk? I got all these dead bodies lying around, man. What do you mean you got all these dead bodies? I got nowhere to put them, man. What you need, man, is a man locker. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> do you have too many dead bodies? Well, let me introduce to you the new Man Locker 2000. You can store up to 210 dead bodies at any one time. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> 30 seconds, so I'll work. <laughs> Okay. Okay. You are the next fire fucking artist. You're the guy out there. He's doing all the cutting edge cool shit. And you've got an awesome mixtape you put together. And you're like, you know what, man? I've got this, like bad boy kind of mixtape and I'm going to just, you know, fucking work it up. I'm going to take my gangster side, my rap side, combine into this fucking kick-ass combination. However, no matter how hard I try or how hard I work, I don't seem to get anywhere. I meet all these A&R people. They're not really that interested. But do you know what? We've got an ointment just for that. You rub it on yourself twice a day. And the next time you meet A&R people, they're like, who's a smooth slick motherfucker who's going to just make this take over the charts and run a massive empire at the same time I don't know who this guy is but obviously to do that you need to be coated in star butter it's the butter that makes you famous <laughs> <sighs> okay yep yeah. star. star butter Hey, I was going to go for an anal joke on that one and I avoided it, so, you know. Uh, the man lock. Ready? Okay. Okay, I will say that Mr. D there is absolutely on the right tracks. You're, you have a lot of enemies out there. Whether it's your, yeah, through no fault of your own, you know, people encroaching on your territory. You have a lot of enemies, you have a lot of people you need to deal with. Absolutely, I understand that. And a man locker, yeah, I can see where he's coming from. What I would like to offer you is something that just negates the the need for any sort of this uh, any sort of storage facility at all for the full sized man. What you really need is well, placenta coffin. Take those fuckers <laughs> out before they're even born. <laughs> you can deal with your enemies. <laughs> Before oh, they've wow. even got a chance to do anything to you. What more do you need? <laughs> well, sent a coffin. I'm hoping it sells itself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> oh, jeez. I can't even thought you'd do it, but I was for bloody hell. I have nothing to say to that. Uh, neither have I. I'm good. I'm quite calm. <laughs> I, think, I think it's on you. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> can't, some things can't be responded to. Star bar is just no. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> No, no. Star bar is just not. I'm no. still trying to see yeah. what the link is. It, it just sounds like somebody wants to be... Is their own trash and just wants to be smeared by, by, and buttered by them? And that's just, no. Th think of it as a kind of, almost like, you know, get those aphrodisiac kind of different products. Think of that, but for your star power, it makes you a fucking superstar. It's like a moisturiser. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm already a superstar, so I do need more butter to make me even more a star. <laughs> I don't know yeah. if I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I was going down the, the gangster rapper rather than the gangster gangster route. The, that's, that was the, the the theory behind it. I can't believe it's not Snoop Dogg. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't believe it's not better. <laughs> Nate Chase says, I can't choose. They're not all that good. <laughs> They're all not that good. Um, Indeed. See, Placenta Coffin... Has now got me on a kind of time cop, you go back in time, take them out type scenario. So that's kind of going uh, sci fi, bit of stuff in there, you know, just carry it along, pick full cop, and then it's all done. <laughs> and then the man lockers just like the, the whole the, the whole sing song just caught me. I'm afraid it's the whole show busy star butter effect that he gave. I just it was amazing. So for the pitch alone, it goes to man locker. Uh, thank you. Thank you, <laughs> thank you Carmine. <sighs> Sorry. Yeah, I'll give you that. The man sold it. The man, the man definitely sold it. And to be fair, I've got no idea what the fuck a placenta coffin is. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I thought placenta coffin was the winner personally. We got nothing. Jesus Christ, man. I have no <laughs> oh, fucking... Do you know what? The night we played this, we were all having a, a proper, like, drinking session on the Friday night. I don't know that it was that funny, but we were just that drunk. It was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, we all ready to go? We yep. Yeah. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, I am a beggar. Sell me something somehow with money that I wouldn't have. <laughs> Tonight's presentation is sponsored by Cardboard Box for all your begging needs. <laughs> Desire finger. Sponsor snake oil. Jesus Christ. I draw. Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> I'm on a I'm on a, a, a shitting streak at this point. Funny, so am I. As the beggar. <laughs> That's because you keep eating cat food. Jay, was, Jay was, says in the chat, use your energy beard, Zane. <laughs> yes. Jay, Jay in the chat is giving away my cards. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so we have six cards on the table. Can I deduce that everybody's ready? Sadly, yes. <laughs> Sadly, oh. indeed. Hey, Mr. K, take it away. What can you sell the homeless? Well, you're already homeless. You live, as you said previously, you live in a cardboard box. I'm sure it's palatial. I'm sure it's got AC. I'm sure it's got like central air, and it's got a fucking lovely cool van somewhere nearby where you can get some uh, fucking moonshine if you need it. Assuming that that's your flavour. Uh, you could be in a cristal. We don't know. We've not discussed that yet. But we'll take you out for a drink after this here pitch. Um, so the two things you need is somewhere to sleep and some way to ensure that you're kept safe. Of course, the only way to sleep anywhere, you could you could have a cardboard box, but the real problem is you've got the chance of rain just fucking up your cardboard box underneath you, and you're like, well, I'm now lying in rain. The cardboard box will keep you dry, but you're now lying in rain. What if you could get yourself off the ground with a nice big cardboard box around you? 
Have yourself a hammock. That <clears throat> sounds pretty luxury, doesn't it? But that hammock's a dangerous thing because you and all of your colleagues around you who, Big Stinky Steve, John, the Crack Banana, Peddler, um, and then Dave, who keeps trying to sell people bitch guns. Um, just These guys aren't going anywhere, but they want your shit. And you think to yourself, I need to keep my hammock safe. The only way to fly is have your hammock. You have the best hammock on the market, made of neoprene, so it's waterproof. It's hangable anywhere. You can put it anywhere you want to put it. You can put it inside your cardboard box. If you're in a sunny country and you're like, I just want to be outside, you can hang it from a fucking tree. You can hang it from your own dog. Amazing. But you need a hammock trap. Motherfuckers try to mess with your hammock. <laughs> Nips off the fucking crack bananas at the source. Job done. Hammock trap. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying anymore. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I think. <clears throat> Zane? We're living in a box. We're living in a cardboard box. You are solid so, snake, aren't you? <laughs> there are... A, 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 there's a combination of things, I think, for your average homeless person. One being a help, one being a hindrance. That inability to shave, definitely a hindrance. Plus, on the plus side, you need to make money. Sitting there begging, it's not an easy thing to do. Most folk will walk past you. There is one definite thing that will help you in that particular course. In fact, what we have here today is a puppy beard. Because who doesn't like puppies? Everybody loves puppies. They're all going to stop and give you some change. Even if it's just to feed the fucking dog. They don't care about people, but everybody will stop and give money to feed a fucking dog. That's what they do. But you don't <laughs> actually want to have to take care of a dog. This is just a beard that is, looks, acts and reacts suspiciously like a puppy. You don't need to shave because you have the puppy beard. <laughs> <laughs> and who doesn't love puppies? <laughs> Did we start the clock? I have no idea. Oh, puppy geez. beard. These cards are fucking awful tonight, man. I'm getting nowhere. <laughs> yes. Again. <laughs> Again. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Toto. Yeah, this uh, Show me what you got. I believe it's yours to lose at this point. It, this is always mine to lose. Um, as a charitable company, in fact, we are actually giving this product away. Um, we are aware that in the time of winter or summer, you may be either too warm or too cold. And with this product, we think we can handle that for you. Um, our product is the thermometer scarf. <laughs> and it will automatically, using a thermometer technology, determine if if you <laughs> if you are to cutting edge. If it's cold weather, it will automatically grow like a shawl round you and wrap you up and make you feel nice and warm. And on the flip side, if you're it's too warm out, the scarf will drift away and just kind of hang down near your sides. So you've always got it. You've always got a bit of warmth there. Or you've just got something you, you don't, you're basically not covered in your own sweat with. Um, and obviously, this is free. If you don't want it, you can flog it to somebody else, make a bit of money, and go and buy some badass whiskey to keep you even warmer if you wanted. So, a win win situation. We win by giving a nice, warm, glowing feeling by giving this product away, and you win with a fantastic product. That is my pitch, and I hope you like it. <laughs> That was wholesome. Rebuttal, ladies. <clears throat> Hammock trap. That's it. It's the balls. <laughs> we need. Uh, puffy beer. That'll keep you warm. Something to snuggle in. It is wrong because I. <laughs> <clears throat> Free product. <laughs> uh, yeah, apparently this is. Snake Oil Charity Edition, like, when did we start just giving things away? Gonna make no money, Sunshine? Yes. <laughs> when we, when we realised it would be a valuable pitch to a beggar. <laughs> this is true. This is true. Okay, I think I've uh, heard enough. Um, <laughs> <not much> yet. 
<laughs> I'm going to put Hammock Trap in the same drawer as uh, Crack Banana, and that is what the fuck. Um, so with regards to the puppy beard now, I was really taken by the puppy beard. As you say, everybody loves a puppy, and most people <laughs> like a beard. So a puppy beard would be fantastic. It would probably perhaps even get you more money and keep you, I don't know, a bit kind of cosy and, and uh, give you some company. And then along came the outside of the thermometer scarf uh, using cutting edge thermometer technology, which uh, is appealing to me even as a beggar. Now, obviously, the big sales pitch here being the fact that it is absolutely free. And if I don't like it, I can just sell it on for booze, which is obviously my favourite thing I've heard this evening. Uh, also, I wouldn't have to get up and walk my face twice, twice a day if I had the puppy beard. So with that, I'm going to go with the thermometer scarf. Thank you very much. Hey. I'll order 10. <laughs> Uh, Zane, we're going to have to get a card on your deck, mate. Is that slang? Yes. Yeah, Zane, I'm look at penis. A, <laughs> definitely having an off night here. Yeah. Uh, so you just need to gauge your audience. I give them shit. <laughs> I give them shit for free. Fuck. Well played. Yeah. But what we didn't say is as a, the charitable corporation, we're making this for whatever amount we're getting backhanders off the, the government for you know <laughs> loans and stuff so we're all in win situation that is really in depth thinking for that. <laughs> and that's, that's, that's not sneak oil that's a marketing strategy <laughs> fucking I'm back on to it. work grants helping the aged helping the young you've got everything going for you young I don't know well, I don't know that he's got a powerpoint deck up there for this with our current president what can you say Duke of Edinburgh Fucking feel, feel free to flip that card out of the back and shoot it. We're talking. We have a mechanic. Mechanic. Fuck. I have nothing for this at all. We just need more drink by the sounds of it. I do. Yeah. That's not the worst idea, back a minute. <laughs> <laughs> well, just remember, you can do like the film. The mechanic with your kind of hitman type thing as well. Got that going on. Well, Doesn't need to be a put your overalls on and do your um, Charlene routine from Neighbours. Charlene, Charlene, no wrong song. Yeah, that's Julian. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. And for those of us who don't remember Charlene from Neighbours, Kelly Minogue. Who the hell doesn't remember Charlene from Neighbours? We've got a young audience in probably the chat room. They might not have heard that. I thought that was the kind of thing that would transcend time and generations. No, I just would have seen Kelly and Wog as Kelly and his little thing that were a great arse. Maybe. Well <gasps> what a great time to join the conversation again. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Two cheers, Red Tail All, stream is over by. No, 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 just a, just a, a, a small... A, a small change. Refreshments. Shall we say? I realise that my game is flat tonight. I also realise what may well be causing that. <laughs> Me too. I think I might indulge. Ladge. <laughs> uh, Time to up the game. Let's tell me. Do you if I hit a whiskey? What will happen? I'll get even more weirder. Whiskey, the whiskey will hit. Hi! Hello. Hello. I got to the mall gin. <laughs> hey, I, I, look at me, I like a gin. Even though uh, it's the least Italian drink in the world, but gin, yeah. Okay, what are uh, you doing? Are you, are you mixing your gin with anything at all? I, I was going to mix it with a crack banana, but I'm all out because I'm fucking Moorish. Just whack some star butter and it'll be fine. Fucking hey, mate, you said it. <laughs> Nate J, I was curious how Stu looks. Yeah, me too, bud. Me too. He is the uh, he is the podcast Honey. goat. Actually, Honey. why him? What about D? <laughs> <laughs> we got a vague vague awareness of D. Uh, yeah, but nah, none, none of us have actually met Stu. We don't actually know how he got involved in this whole thing. To be fair, I've never seen my face because it's usually 20 feet up. <laughs> <laughs> By which we don't mean he lives in a, a castle, we just mean he's tall. Or maybe average height compared to the rest of them. 
I can't find a fucking thing to play here. Can I opt out? Or <laughs> well, what I was saying is, remember, the mechanic doesn't need to be a guy in overalls. It could be like Jason Statham, Hitman. <laughs> a fucking assassin? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, Jesus, man. This is terrible. Fucking chronic, isn't it? What's the son of a Jesus, man? Oh, that is a controversial song. Uh, yeah, I'm just picking shit out of a hat here, I'll be honest. <laughs> you change your cards as well, so it's not as if it's... No, I just think this is either the wrong version of the fucking game or something horrible's happened, because this is not what we were playing that Friday night, although we were fucking <laughs> bashed. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've just started drinking my mixture of the Bowmore whiskies. Nice. So, tastes rather nice, actually. Wow, man. I have no idea what the fuck to do with this. <laughs> no idea what to do with this. Close your eyes, pick two, and see what comes out. And make it up on the spot. Rectic means it's shit. Let's go. Let's get it over with. <laughs> shaky, shaky. That's okay. it. That's oh, one oh, oh, nice. Are you taking okay. your card? Oh, nope. you just throwing it out? <laughs> I that's, have an item. That's a winner. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it. That's not a bad call, by the way. <laughs> Plain blind. Card hey, who's first? <laughs> Uh, B D. Hello. You're up first, sir. Okay, so I've uh, been sitting here listening to everybody's complaints about oh, we've got such bad cards, and what I was kind of thinking was a, a good a good workman never blames his tools like <laughs> like these guys here. And speaking of a, a good workman, as I never blamed you for anything. A great mechanic such as yourself. Um. I, what what you're going to hear probably is is kind of a couple of products over there that is just going to be nonsensical. It's going to be not useful to you. And I know you as a professional are always looking for better ways of improving your, your working. Now, I did a bit of reading up on you, Mr. Mechanic, and you're not just a, a mechanic. You specialise in, in boats. So I'm basically practically going to sell you something you will have never seen before. And I know frustrates boat mechanics the world over. And I give to you the boat ladder. Now you can actually get up to those hard to reach engine areas in big large boats and basically increase your business because up until now you've only been able to work on those wee dinghy boats down there because you've not been able to reach up there. Even given your striking 18 foot stature yourself, <laughs> you still need that extra reach. So I give to you the only practical option on this table, I guarantee you the boat ladder. <laughs> I'm glad you explained right. that because the point I thought you were having a wank, so... That was good. <laughs> You're working on that dinghy. Working on that dinghy? I always think you are having a good shake at the time, so... <laughs> Sorry, please continue, I'm just digressing. Oh, I'm, 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 my, my pitch is done, thank you. My work here is done. Mr. K. I got accused of having a nonsensical product, and I guarantee you that is very much the case. However, <laughs> have you ever been working on... You've got your car. And it's up on the ramps, it's up in the, the fucking thing that left your car. <laughs> <laughs> and you look at it and go, you know what? I know I need to break that seal there under the engine and get the oil out because I need to change the engine. But I'm thinking, to get up there, I need to get up there with a basin, unfasten it, hold it above my head for what could be 20 minutes while it drains, which is quite hard if you're left anything above your head for 20 minutes, let alone a couple of litres of oil. You're going, this is fucking horrible. You think to yourself, what could I get that would go, would stop that from being such a bloody chore? And I'm thinking, there's only one product. And the great thing about it is, not only does it do that, but because it's two separate components, you can take it apart. One part you can use to prod things. The other part you can use to put in whatever you want. And it's also magnetic, so you can capture little iron filings at the engine. And you can put all your bolts and screws and everything in it. Because what you need, my friend, is stick bowl. Stick bowl goes all the way up. You hold it up, just, and you're standing right at level. Bow up there magnetic, all the shit fires that engine, you take it over, empty it out, you unscrew people's wheels, you do whatever you want, and you've got a wee magnetic bolt to put them on. Things banging, it's awesome. And also you can use a stick to like touch up women from afar. 
Egg drop. Lovely. <laughs> the fucking silence is resounding. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's patch this up. Alright, Gavna! You don't need to waste your time on this pair of Muppets. I've got what you need right here. What we got for you today is some carpet wire. <laughs> Nothing but the best finest <laughs> carpet <laughs> wire. For some reason, it's more reasonable to see it in a Cockney accent. <laughs> what does a carpet wire do, you may ask me, old Sam? Well, let me tell you right now. The carpet wire is a carpet. It's a wire. <laughs> the carpet wire is a wire that goes around. <laughs> that four stops them pulling up at the end, mate. Stops all those dogs coming in. <laughs> Tracking up all your carpet. It's perfect, mate. Carpet wire. Sorted. <laughs> Lovely jubbly. <laughs> Right, okay. Any any extras? Nope. Carpet wire! <laughs> oh, hey, mate, what more do you need here? Uh, oh, my fucking grandmother, if it helps. Uh, um, right. The I believe wire... he also called you, you slag. That's <laughs> fine. I am a slag, that is true. Ah, oh, what we got? We've got a bolt ladder, which is practical. Um, Stick ball pure GML genius. <laughs> a Zint on the Australian. <laughs> Cheers, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> Best impression award. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, the deluxe version of the bolt yeah. ladder also comes uh, with a dongle basin, which is a. You can't just add shit on. That's not a bolt. <laughs> you can't just bolt shit on, President Fuckface. <laughs> <laughs> See, a, a stick ball just sounds like you'd be cheaper buying a funnel and a pipe. So here's a fucking, here's a fucking the funnel thing, up. mate. Hi? Here's a fucking thing, mate. If you bought a boat and it needs a fucking ladder, it should already be attached to the fucking boat. Otherwise, how would you get in the fucking thing to see whether you want to buy the fucking boat or not? Man's trying to sell you something you don't fucking need. Stick that ball, just stick the fucking things in your fucking pockets, mate. It's fine. Carpet wire. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to the Australian, he knows what he's talking about. <laughs> uh, no, a stick ball is brown because you don't need to hold it up high, you hold it at the bottom and you don't have to hold your arms up. You've got a funnel, you're having to do this shit. Stick ball, man. Got, got got fucking like pockets just... in your fucking overalls, mate. You don't need a fucking stick ball. I just, <laughs> I've just went full. You put oil on your overalls, you Aussies. To, to be honest, carpet wire would have worked if you were an assassin, but I, I don't. I, the accent's fantastic, but. For keeping dogs out, what the fuck? Come on, carpet wire is totally fucking bothering <laughs> mate. So sorry, the carpet wire guy is selling a product, and his his rebuttal against my product is I've got pockets. He keeps oil in his pockets. Do you trust a man that keeps oil in his fucking pockets? <laughs> Tell you what, mate, you're or, or a man carpet that wire. To... I'll throw in Carly Minogue's ass just for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and a shrimp on the barbie. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, these are crap. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, a boat ladder. I'd already have one of those. Plus, well, I can I can reach just about anything. I mean, Jesus Christ, I'm beginning to be a chief for fuck's sake. Um, so boat ladder, nah, no, thank you. Um, mate, I'll sell you wire carpet. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's um, later, other product, bowl stick. <laughs> <laughs> In case you need to poke your bowl. Um, <laughs> oh, man, this is mental. Oh, come um, on, mate. Hurry the fuck up about it. <laughs> Who's your salesman? I think I, just, I think I just lost it there, didn't I? <laughs> you, you did, yeah. So, <laughs> because of the shitty pushness of the Aussie slash Cockney wanker, um, you just introduced we, an all new uh, bigger boat ladder, bigger than any boat ladder you've ever seen before <laughs> in your life. Now coming to you at the all new low price of seven ninety nine. Coming your way, you can't get it cheaper anywhere else in the universe. Thank you. Does, does I, it thought, come I with, genuinely, does it come with, I genuinely uh, thought you were going to say, "I've got boat ladder. I've got a new product called President Boat Ladder." 
How about some boat wire? It's as crappy as it seems, we're going to have to go with the stick boat. <laughs> jet. Got fucking jet. <laughs> the, the shitty... The, the shitty Cockney Australian accent, which I could probably make as shit if I did it myself. Um, no. Yeah, if, done it, uh, if, if you're an assassin, it might work out all right, you know, but no, you're a shit, mate. So, so, no, no, that, that's shit. You're just a total slag, all right? <laughs> slag. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh, someone <laughs> make the mechanic. There you go. Oh, little deep from Essex trying try to slag me off like. <laughs> <laughs> you know it's amazing, right? So Zarax from the UK, so he knows what we're, what the gibbering is and is laughing at it. Jay is frankly <laughs> just going, "What the fuck is going on?" <laughs> what like, what, what the fuck are you on about? That's what it should be. Exactly Although I'll about play me. that back and it will sound like a perfectly normal Edinburgh accent, so I, I can't win. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck my cards are. I am a hostage. Oh, you're a hostage. Okay. Up. I'm a hostage of the crack banana. Uh, how can I... I Zane, where the fuck are all your cards? They're here for some reason. I'm not finding out anymore. So I'm trying to uh, find a way to... There we go. The deal? Uh, draw rather than deal. All right. What do we got? One, two, three, four, five, six. Give me another one. And give me another one. Can we upgrade to 15 cards each? <laughs> <laughs> okay, what's a hostage need? Fucking miracle. <laughs> um, if any guys are saying that, you've won. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, this is going to be rubbish. So tense. I can't remember that card was. Oh, gangster. D. Can we make that the next profession? <laughs> gangster president. <laughs> He's not far off it right enough. Ah, oh, fuck's sake, man. <clears throat> Uh, real classy. No <laughs> problem with using good mics. What do you mean? <laughs> Just squeeze it out, mate. All right, let's do it, mate. <laughs> Fuck Get this fucking mic. Again. <laughs> Get this fucking thing sound like. <laughs> All right, Zane, hit us with your hit me with your best shot. Me first. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Well. I, I mean, okay. I have to say, and it's with great sadness that I tell you this, but what hasn't started. It's, a, it's with great sadness that I tell you this, but no one's coming to rescue you. It's just the way of all these days. It's like no one will negotiate. You're going to have to find your own way out of this. You're going to have to somehow defeat these people that are holding you hostage all on your own. Therefore, you're going to have to find a way to murder them. <laughs> I swear to fuck, if this is another van. <laughs> There's many ways to do this. I mean, obviously, like... Yeah. Physical assault is going to be difficult. You're seeing Terry Dater at the end of the day, you know. It, it makes things a bit a bit tricky. But uh, what, what if we could just use... I don't know, gas, bodily fluids. What if you could just kill them with your own farts? <laughs> this nice little subtle filter that you just kind of thankfully plopped up your arse before you became a hostage. <laughs> oh, <laughs> because, yeah, 
I also don't know how to tell you this, but at some point in the very, 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 very near future, yeah, you're going to get taken hostage, mate. I don't know what it is that gives it away. It's probably that card that says hostage in front of you. But <laughs> when that happens, this nice wee filter that up over your up over your arse, basically when you let out a nice little excretion, it will push through some pure, unadulterated... <laughs> I've just thought any gas that I put out there is going to kind of kill you as well as uh, the hostages. I think we're at that. I'm not that product. Aye, I, I think it's a recall going on for this particular product. And that with the pitch. Next! I'm losing tonight. That's just the way it goes. <laughs> oh, I've got to make up more pish. Okay. Um. <laughs> So, speaking of pish, at some, at some point as a hostage, or in, or in your current situation, you're, you're going to lose it. Your bottle's going to go, and you're just not going to have the balls to stand up and do anything, and you're going to end up pishing yourself. And there's nothing more <laughs> embarrassing than the the people we've taken your hostage seeing a big pool of pish around the bottom of your ankles. So... These trousers can be worn at any time. We all have the moments where we have to push it, not just as a hostage, you might have be caught short, just want to go. So our product is for, basically when you've lost your bottle and you don't have the balls anymore, we're giving you the trousers, the ball trousers. That's right. These trousers have a built-in diaper or nappy, depending on which part of the country you may be taking hostage in. So you can go with the full confidence of knowing the fact that you've lost the complete will to fucking be a man, but you can still piss in comfort and not be embarrassed. I give you the ball trousers. Nothing better than having a good old hot piss and nobody can see it. I rest it there. Thanks. I think. Hey, worries. <laughs> ball trousers. See? Please tell me you get something better than ball trousers or an arsehole that will destroy me. <laughs> So picture the scene. You are the hostage. I'm You're right, the right in it. All the other hostages have been murdered. You're next. There's no one coming for you and there's no escape. What is it that you need? Why have I got a fucking murderer card sitting next to me? <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> <laughs> so you were saying I was saying so you're all alone you're the hostage everyone else has been killed you're next you know you're next you know there's no way out of this but wait a minute you've just remembered the strangest weirdest thing that you were ever given as a present you still wonder to this day this morning you thought about it why am I putting this in my pocket this morning because I have absolutely no need for this do you know the one thing that's going to get me out of this situation you need a pocket elevator when you're being held by a bunch of clowns. You need a pocket elevator leaving the scene when it's going down. As recommended by Joe Perry. <laughs> <laughs> Is that you, Dan? <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking that's a yes. Yes. Okay. Um, any rebuttals? <laughs> so we've got ball trousers that are going to do something to let you piss with. yourself while you're murdered. You can be, you can piss anywhere you want and not be embarrassed. For more okay, day. because it's like the the one thing that I really worried about when I'm taking hostage is breaking fucking etiquette. Um, <laughs> a pocket elevator that's going to take you where exactly? Anywhere you want. <laughs> <laughs> Via your pocket, somehow. <laughs> Look, I mean, all I'm saying is with these choices, you might as well kill yourself. And with a murder orifice, you can definitely do that. <laughs> Nobody's coming, coming to save you. It's a hard, hard, harsh life out there. And yeah, you might as well take your own life before the terrorists do it for you. Okay, in an ironic turn of events, as the hostage, I'm going to actually put you guys at your misery. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> right, the pocket elevator makes no sense. I'm assuming it's some kind of quantum device that like transports you, which is genius. <laughs> but also anybody. sounds also based on the fact that it's a quantum device and they can't move ones and zeros by quantum yet I would assume that I would be torn out of tiny pieces. Granted it'd be a painless death, but still a weird one at that. Uh, the murder orifice is a terrible idea, although I am interested in working with this company. If it was Dragon's Den, I'd be giving him 15 quid because <laughs> at least he backed his product the fuck off the market when he realised it was terrible. Um, as for the ball trousers, my priority is not to stop myself from pissing myself. Frankly, I'd be using my piss and throwing it at my captors. Um, so with that said, I need to renege on my original statement and say I want a fucking pocket elevator just to see I've got one. <laughs> go, oh, you go. Go, go, catch yes. it. Pocket elevator. <laughs> Nobody knows what it does. That's why I wanted. Put it this way. If you're talking about product sales, people buying fidget fucking spinners. What? Indeed. <laughs> oh, I really want that metal thing on a fucking ball bearing. I think it was designed by the bearing market. <laughs> <laughs> much, like, much like the pocket elevator was created by the uh, Schindler market. Hmm. <laughs> <sighs> Native J in the chat said, elevators scare me in real life. You can thank horror movies for that. Everybody is aware that when an um, elevator is like kind of open, you think that could fall and cut me in half. I've had that fear. Well, I one of the most close to horror movie moments I've ever had in my life was I was in the, the kind of the working office and I shared an office um, with the, the, the facilities, the estate manager. Uh, and one day he got trapped in a lift and it, it kind of almost sounds like kind of too kind of um, kind of fake, but this is exactly what happened. The left got stuck halfway between the floors, and I had to pull him up and out whilst the left was halfway between floors. And in the back of my mind, I'm just thinking this left is just going to go, and I'm going to let evil, resident evil, resident evil, fucking body. Oh, who was that? Uh, Somebody at work. Not names, yeah, obviously. It was when I used to work in Erskine. Ah, right, Jesus, that's horrific. Yeah, it was it was a scary kind of ten seconds <laughs> until he just in, until he chopped his body in half and got it over with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, until I pressed the button on the left and went, "See ya, peace." <laughs> That's horrific, but actually no less horrific than the fucking cards I've been playing tonight. So uh, let's go. All righty, ladies and gentlemen, <coughs> I am a pilot. Ooh, oh. send me your shit. Oh, Tonight's shit. show is brought to you by Desire Finger. I think it should be. It's the only product that's actually worth using tonight, to be honest. Oh, man. <clears throat> this isn't good. I have got absolutely fuck all. Um. <laughs> now for a musical interlude. <laughs> Need a pocket elevator. Being held up by a bunch of clowns. Need a pocket elevator. <laughs> Leaving the scene when it's going down. See what key's that in? It's in an A! It's in an A! It's in an A! It's in an A! The Yanks are going business. Somebody got a bongo. <laughs> this is crap. Nobody saw that coming. <laughs> <laughs> what I was most surprised by is that guitar still in tune. <laughs> oh, mercy. All right, so we have six cards on the table. Are we all ready? I'm just so loving to point out. these cards going, this is crap, as if we have been just pure fucking gold all night up until this point. <laughs> do, you just, do you just to point out as well, that was actually an A. <laughs> Shut up, seriously. Yeah. It's an A! It's an A! <laughs> uh, fucking elevator! Anyway, if we can start with the lovely Mr. Pink, it is the Mr. Key. Okay, so you're a pilot and you are the man about town. You look like a badass wherever you fly. You're just cutting about in a cool-looking, a cool-ass suit. The only thing you fear out with 
of your obvious alcohol problems. Um, is, oh, is yes, that is everyone's worst nightmare. Uh, that and Tim Curry. Um, so the worst thing that can happen to you is getting caught in bad weather. Now, even with your nerves of steel, you think ah, bad weather, man. Don't don't fucking like it. it. Makes me nervous. Makes me cautious. And the last thing everybody needs is flying on fuck you airways is going. I don't want to feel nervous in this flight. I personally am a terrible flyer, and I'm going on holiday next week. Actually. Uh, and I'm shitting myself about the flight. However, if I had a pilot that was going, don't worry about it. I'm not. We shouldn't know about this as the consumers, but the pilots should have something a little special to sort them out. We offer our specialised robot, and this specialised robot is called the Blizzard Sex. This is a high altitude pilot masturbating, fucking highly filleting genius robot that will fuck you in bad weather, and you just feel just all right about it. So buy the Blizzard Sex. It will make your bad weather a sunshiny day. <laughs> I need more gin. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Oh, okay. What's the name? I'm sorry, I got high altitude pilot master beating into one sentence. I'm pretty proud of that much. <laughs> well done. Okay, let's oh. face that. I mean, we, we don't exactly need to beat a... Your life takes you all over the world. Your life takes you far from home for the vast majority of your, your time. And you have certain arches. There are all these hostesses, hotel employees, there are women all over the world who are just looking to make that time a bit easier to pass. And what you need, because what you don't want is lots of little pilots running about all over the world. Air rubber. <laughs> Guaranteed not to burst at 10,000 feet. However, <laughs> 30,000 feet. <laughs> and what more? <laughs> Spot trickle a flyer. <laughs> what's, what's, what's more? I mean, if you really want to go for that blizzard sex and have that cold, harsh bit of metal ram, ramming up your yes, at least an air rubber on top of that thing will make it a bit easier to take. I don't know what more to say. Air rubber. <laughs> Every pilot's friend. <laughs> Thanking you. Ah, oh, man, there's no way I can follow this. Okay. Um, Holy <clears> shit, <throat> that must be bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> base got nothing. Um, hang on. Oh, sorry. Um, okay, you're the key man on the, the plane. Um, but I don't think you get enough appreciation from passengers, some of our staff. And what we are going to offer here is a special service that when you land at each of your destinations, you get given uh, a key present to show just how amazing and important that you are because you are the key man and this present could be random but it'll make your day better than an air stewardess giving you some blizzard sex with an air rubber rammed in between you. This can be anything you want. You choose from the list, it'll be waiting for you at your next destination because you are the key man to the operation. <laughs> <laughs> and that is me. <laughs> Any easy rebuttals for anybody? I mean, you don't have to say this thing can be anything you want it to be. Like, really? That's your. <laughs> that's your best <laughs> I'm out of ideas. Can I have yours? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you see, what, what, your, what blizzard, here, your blizzard what sex is. For you is anything you can possibly imagine. Just make it up yourself. I can't be arsed. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? I, that sounds an awful lot like a meeting with BT. <laughs> At the end of the day, blizzard sex, you know, you're basically saying that any stewardess be straight in there, so that's a redundant product. Not at all. Air... Bad weather, they've got to be strapped into their seatbelts, otherwise they might get injured, so you need How... something autonomous. You've, you've clearly not been on, no, you've probably not you've had your milk on your flights when you've been flying, <laughs> but you always see stewardesses cutting up and down in the bad weather. I've never seen many seated, and if they are on the move, they're straight down to the pilot to get a wee bit extra. 
<laughs> so I'm afraid to say butter sex. <laughs> so what you're saying is when it's bad weather, the, the stewardess is eating chewing gum? <laughs> so see all that turbulence again? Oh, this is just the stewardess sitting on the pilot's lap, knocking the controls about. We bit of juddery here and there, and that's where you're getting, for you saying turbulence, it's actually them getting down and dirty. <laughs> I actually uh, love that idea. <laughs> air rubber. Yeah, that, that's just there if you want to, if you want to live, well, safely without any danger. But let's face it, you're up in the air. It's all about danger. So why would you need air rubber? I mean, come on, you don't want it. You hit the ground, your presence waiting for you. You've ticked the box of what you want. You're the key man. You've just been fucked. You've just made sure that the passengers have the most amazing ride of their life. And you want a reward for that. That's why uh, you, the key uh, man, we, get we, we admit it, danger. <laughs> This man is a professional. This man every day takes thousands of people's lives into his own hands. This man is all about and nothing about that's about nothing else but safety. I think you'll find this man is about making sure people get safely to their destination. This man thinks nothing it's else. Not what your rubbers would do though, would it? <laughs> other than safety, with a little bit of ooh in between. Because let's face it. They could turn around the turbulence. He doesn't have to have that stewardess sitting on his lap. Turn around the turbulence! <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Why am I arguing with a man that doesn't even have a bloody thing to sell? Here, <laughs> have a present, have a gift. I don't know what it is. If you open it up, it's a nice big mystery and it's whatever you want it to be. No, no, I, what I said was they can choose from a list when he lands. <laughs> okay. Let's just wait. Uh... All right, gents. <laughs> You've already listened. I've, I've reached a conclusion anyway, so... There's only really one, sorry, there's literally only two things on the table. <laughs> what, um, rubbers and sex? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's... key present, it just reminded me of something like SO Tiger tokens, where you collect 10,000 of them, and you get a free packet of McCoy's or something. It's just <laughs> like, that's, oh, no, that's a deal. You still yeah, like McCoy's, it has to be a key customer. So your key present is just key <laughs> shite. Um, with regards oh, to Blizzard sex... If that's what you ticked on the list, then you can have that. <laughs> oh, no, Blizzard, I've... Blizzard sex is, uh, it goes against everything I'm trained to be as a pilot. Uh, I am trained for safety. I have hundreds of thousands of people in my care every year up and down the country. Air rubber seems like the only safe product for a pilot, so I will indulge myself in air rubber. Nice. We, I'm also nice. recommending that Zane and I join forces and we introduce a new line of Blizzard Sex air rubbers so that in bad weather, you've got a Blizzard Sex robot that's going to bone you and you've got an air rubber just in case you've got oil in your cup. Can I, can I sign it up as a key present on my list? <laughs> <laughs> Presented by key present. <laughs> you know, we should actually have to, we should actually be allowed to do that if we actually like our person's pitch. If you can make the cards fit, you can actually combine for a lot. <laughs> just jump on their back. Aye. With an air rubber on, of course. Uh, okay, hey, finally I get to sit back and do fuck all for a change. <laughs> uh, I, will, I will back up to where eight cards each. Yeah. Yo, we have... <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Hey, y'all! <laughs> Sell me. Sorry, I flipped the wrong key. Um... I am... Um... Oh, this isn't looking good. I'm, I'm going to drop this. This is out of order. <laughs> Fuck am I got it anyway? Okay, I've got something a bit iffy. Given the last time with cheerleader, I came out with something a bit of food as well. <laughs> That's right, oh, the, lad the ladder oh, vegetable. Oh yeah. Don't you actually come out with something this time? What do you mean? Key present was the best <laughs> I could do at the time. <laughs> oh, I've been there, son, trust me. Been, well, in fact, you saw it. I just threw my cards away halfway through the pitch. <laughs> they were the two best cards. Ah, sludge. Oh my god, it's a great chess game. What are we going with? Get me warm in here. Right. 
Right, Kay, put it away and put your pitch on a table. Righty. <laughs> I'm going to worry now, Mines is going to a place I don't really want to go to. That sounds excellent. No, it's not. <laughs> Zanes! Yeah, welcome to the channel, buddy. And as to what we Zanes smell like, oh. I think I'll let you handle that one, bud. I think uh, fried chicken and let's, eight. Let's just say there's a reason we're sitting in four separate rooms playing a virtual board game. <laughs> Touché. <laughs> okay, are we all good? Mr. Soto, give it your best. Or whatever. Or not. <laughs> <laughs> well... As a cheerleader, you're bound to get pumped at some point. <laughs> oh, <fucking laughs> Let's hell, face it, you're, you're wearing scantily clad dresses. There's a lot of people going to be looking up your special areas. Muff so, you, so basically, you're going to get pumped. <laughs> so basically, there's a thing that's going to happen here. And normally, <laughs> you hear stories. You you'd hear stories about band camp and stuff, but there's some truth behind it. So, I'm giving you the drill drum. Because when you're getting drills, you need a drum to beat that rhythm out so that you can feel fucking good. That is why you need it. The what drill drum. What the fuck? I did fucking warn you. Jesus, that's one of the more obtuse ones considering the cards I've played tonight. <laughs> yeah. hey, D, oh, if this guy gets any more misogynistic, you're going to have to give him that president <laughs> card over. <laughs> <laughs> I did warn you it was going to a place oh. I didn't really want to go in, but... <laughs> Nah, you're absolutely right Where's the meat with the carbs? That's it <laughs> I've been using that excuse my whole <laughs> So you keep a fucking tw <laughs> you keep a 54 deck in your pocket? I, I, had a, I had an innocent mind before I started playing with these guys And as soon as you start playing this game You just become gutter <laughs> material <laughs> It's either pure gutter or he'll actually ram you into the gutter playing Forza. This guy has no opportunities other than gutters. <laughs> pure gutter sounds like a new uh, genre of music. Like <laughs> Primer Garage, pure gutter. Mr. D, your two minutes begins now. From the company that brought paraplegics the alcohol avalanche, we are now proud to bring to the cheerleaders the condom avalanche. <laughs> As Mr. Soto Mundu presented earlier on, y'all are going to get fucked. And you're going to get <laughs> fucked a lot. It's the only reason why you're here, let's face it. So, what I want to do is to allow you to be able to indulge in that without any penalties, any problems, any regrets. So, you don't have a regret from just having sex. It's the stuff that comes with having sex unprotected. And you can't do that in this day and age. You have to have a condom. There's no way you can't. And I know that you're going to go through more than one, two, five, ten a night. <laughs> you need a condom avalanche to keep up with that speed, that energy, that passion that you've got flowing between the parts of your legs. <laughs> so I bring you... You can't you don't have enough, you've not got enough space, you can't just kind of whip one out and then the next guy's on you and go, like, oh, there you go, you've not got that kind of bulk in your purse or in your bag, you've got other things in, like Blue Wicked to keep in there. So <laughs> give you the condom avalanche and you can go all night long. To the beat, to the beat of the drop. <laughs> Sheet. <laughs> right, if, if anyone's expecting an improvement on that, I ain't going to be the guy. I've seen a theme here, are you going to break it? <laughs> nope, not at all. I'm uh, running with what I would call a constant. Um, so these guys have made this allusion to you, my dear cheerleading friend, who they all think you're going to get fucked. But you know what? Maybe you are, maybe you aren't, but you know what? That's your choice, and you can choose to do that. 
But you know what? Sometimes you're going to go to these little parties, these little frat house do's and think, understand my own understanding of cheerleading is TV and films. Um, <laughs> as <laughs> you may wish to go, I don't want your advances. But some of them are pushy, dirty little jock fucks. And you go, I need some way of making them go, oh, I'm not doing that. I'm getting away from her. You don't really want to fart on them because that's not ladylike. And you really want something that they could tell people that would be believable. <laughs> that's right. This isn't believable. Um, what you need to do is you need to get them at the last line of defence. At your muff, at your vaginas, at what you may term your flower, you need to distract them when they get there and they go, what the fuck is that? And you go, that my friend, is a booger flower. I put that bad boy in my vaginas, these jocks run screaming because they're going, that chick's got a booger flower and you're going, fucking right I do. Back down jock boy, I went and play basketball with your sweaty ball bag friends. Uh, <laughs> shit man. This is the fucking weirdest game of I've ever played. <laughs> <laughs> I told you not to hit record, man. <laughs> I did worse than hit record. I hit live. What was I thinking? Okay. Um. I wouldn't. Uh... Well, you see, your your booger flower isn't going to put everybody off because we all know there's some out there who likes eating boogers. And they're going to go straight past that flare and go straight into that lassie's pom poms. So <laughs> I'm afraid to say that's a duff product. Um, <laughs> I've only had a present key. Or a key present would be even better. Yes. <laughs> then when you open it, you get the most amazing surprise. My word. Um, so I'm going to stick drill drum in the crack banana drawer. And we all know what that means. Now, as for booger flour, you could have vomit on that and I'm just going to slap on a condom from my avalanche and still get in about that shit. Ain't going to oh. stop me. Now you I'm, see, just assuming I've got a classy, I'm just assuming I've got a classy customer here. Sorry. Okay, well, I do have to say, drill drum, the last thing I want to start doing is banging a drum and everybody coming along to see what the fuck is going on while I'm being drilled. But all so, cheerleaders <laughs> have that kind of... But that can go to don't Public. you t don't you who's the cheerleader here? Don't you tell me what all cheerleaders are about. Well, Thank clearly you you're much, the sir. clearly you're the frigid one, aren't you? <laughs> I was absolutely and entirely going to go for not the drill drum because it just comes off your tongue, you know. The safety first. God, the avalanche sounds like an ab. <laughs> <laughs> but speaking as the man who came up with the crack banana. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> the bigger flowers getting it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's brilliant. I forgot. I forgot, I forgot you get spiked just because uh, Zane's got multiple, uh, <laughs> multiple kind of fingers, multiple pies. Shall we say? Oh, uh, do you want neck and neck here? Scandalous behaviour. Oh. <laughs> this is a terrible fucking turn tonight. I tell you. I love to I love to blame the game and the card. It's actually my lack of imagination. Yet you're in joint first. Ooh, that's true. Oh. It doesn't mean I'm any good, it just means that everybody else is otherwise shit. <laughs> Born Stellar Prime, welcome to the chat, buddy. <laughs> what we got? What we're selling? What's what's or who we selling to? More accurately. Somebody flew that card. Give it to me. Hey, how appropriate. Oh for fuck's sake. It's not a geek, is it? Is that one of those guys that used to like philosophize and wear togas? Aye, totally. That's, that's the one. That's the one. It's fucking that's Pythagoras. the dyslexic ones. Fucking Pythagoras and that. I used to be dyslexic, but then I had some like uh, like antacids. Oh, I thought that's why you wore your glasses. No! Says the guy wears glasses. <laughs> People in glasses, you shouldn't throw glasses. <laughs> but I got mine for a key present if I'm alright. <laughs> See those fucking bonus points, man? God damn it! <laughs> oh, sweet Jesus. This is oh, over. fucking hell, man. What the shit are you supposed to do with that? Crap, man. It's Zacko 3.0. Oh, it's Zacko 3.0. There's Zacko back from the, the fucking from the Doom. That's who Bond Stellar Prime is. Ah, fucking hell, man. <laughs> Change your name, dude. Hey, the Zacko. 
I also like that Zacho has decided that it's Zacho 3.0, like Zacho's actually a versionable object. <laughs> Good <laughs> on you, man. Reinvent yourself like Madonna. Fucking do it. <laughs> what the f- I... What the fuck? I've got fuck all again. Or I've got the most amazing geek product that somebody will buy. If it's if, if it's anything of that, I'll come on it. It's uh, in the key present subtraction list. Funny. Yeah. You know, sometimes you just need to throw a round away. You just need to go, this is not my time. <laughs> I can do it. All right, it's like, I should have used this for the mechanic, I didn't even thought. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. Yeah, that's definitely not the face of a geek. Knocked over, fell over a bit. Are we all good? Yeah, go for it. Okay, shortest pitch ever. Don't even need to bother starting that clock because. I'll kick off. Speaking as one gate to another, you're too smart for your own good. That cheerleader for the last round is just never going to sleep with you. You might as well just kill yourself. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no way, seriously? Done. Fucking hell. <laughs> awesome, okay. Um... <laughs> Were you home for more time to think? Yeah, thanks very much. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll time. go. I'll go for the same thing. Basically, anything technology-wise, if you're out and about, you normally got glasses because you need to see shit, and they're usually big milk bottle stuff. But what if you could have glasses that give you special X-ray vision or extra zoom, but you don't want to walk with wires all plugged into batteries or anything like that? So. How about solar glasses? <laughs> you can walk around, even in the fantastic um, Mordor environment we have here in Scotland, and it will still give you enough charge to use all your powers within the glasses, but you could be your own superhero. <laughs> now, if that's not geek, I don't know what is. <laughs> oh, mercy. Do you going to get me laid? <laughs> <laughs> Death, tech, and sex. Well, since that's what you're looking for, maybe I can produce. <laughs> yeah, I as long as it's produced, not reproduced, that's fine. <laughs> what? So you're a geek, and I've got something that will help every aspect of your life. Any area of your life you can possibly imagine as a geek. You need help with a thesis? Paper storm! <laughs> <laughs> You have an idea, need something to write on? Paper store! <laughs> What's that? You're bored and you want something to read? Paper store! <laughs> and you want a way to impress the geek ladies? I give you paper store. <laughs> Can you use that as toilet paper as well? Paper store! <laughs> uh, oh, wow. thank you. Right, rebuttals, anyone? Bloody hell, paper storm, you're going to get a hell of a lot of cuts for that, surely. I mean, the last thing you want to review about going to any lady has been having your face and harm, self-harm type cuts on you because you've had a fucking storm with some paper. You don't want that. And suicide caller, come on, we're not fucking emos, man. <laughs> we are the people who want to be alive, we just want to be seen. You want some special glasses that will give you special x-ray vision or make you zoom in and stuff, sore glasses, sorted, you're a talking point, people come and speak to you, result. And then if you want to write something about sore glasses, PAPER STORE! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I fucking cut myself, it's a suicide, oh shit. You need to write a suicide note, PAPER STORE! <laughs> <laughs> and uh, which, uh, which um, place can I buy this paper store from? Yeah, I'm absolutely sure with your water cooled i7 and twin GTI, uh, twin 1080 GTIs that you want all that paper just kicking about the place. You're going to have so much use for all of that paper. Absolutely. 
No, that, I mean, th yeah, it doesn't matter. Solo classes, absolutely. But yeah, face it, kill yourself. <laughs> All right, that's quite enough rebuttal because I've, I've been rocked, <laughs> I've been excited, I've been massively depressed. Um, <laughs> suicide call is way too much. It's been a rich week and I'm not having a suicide call, so you can fuck off with that. Um, <laughs> solo glasses are tempting. I'm tempted by the solar glasses. My, I was actually sitting tonight looking at this going, I can't see shit. So I might look at solar glasses. However, I am pushed over the edge on Paper Storm purely because if ever I open up, I pick up my Paper Storm book and open it, it makes this sound. Paper Storm! <laughs> I'm sold. <laughs> Paper Storm it is. <laughs> oh, yeah, Mate, yeah, see yeah, if you yeah. hadn't queued there, you wouldn't have getting it. <laughs> 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 oh man, oh, I can I can see it now with the normal podcast as a uh, little jingles of adverts for products now. <laughs> it's in paper star. <laughs> this story is you're going to be very busy for that. Your house is making jingles. Sorry, <laughs> finger paper storm. Need the pocket elevator. <laughs> Mate, your your career just take a fucking weird turn. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> all right, ladies and gentlemen, are we all ready for uh, me revealing as to who I am? Please do. I am a mad scientist. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> Damn it, those solar fucking glasses would be an ideal. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. I R N. <clears throat> ah, this is not good. Um, I have to pick two random ones. I keep putting my cards in, forgetting what the fuck I played. <laughs> I do that as well. I always bring my cards back and go, "What did I play again?" Okay. Oh, we are all good. Six cards on the table. Three players. What's the odds, ladies? Right, okay. First up is Mr. K. Okay. Mad scientist, my yeah. friend who is someone who that is going to change the world for us in some <laughs> outlandish way or other. Now, you've got all these amazing ideas. You've got all these fantastic fucking, like, you've got... So many! So many contraptions, man! So many fucking Joneses! Catch! The it's a very nice hat. Um, <laughs> you have all these amazing contraptions, all these amazing ideas, and you could change the world for the better, or for the more entertaining, if you want to put it that way. Um, the only problem is, and I, because I know you famously, Mr. Mad Scientist, that you uh, are unable to remember half of the great ideas you have. <laughs> so I recommend our product. It's a pill. It's a little pill, little tiny yellow pill. Small, yellow, different. But it does this for you. Gives you wonder memory. You remember everything. All your great ideas compartmentalised in little folders in your mind fucked up palace. Amazing, beautiful. You remember everything you've got. Every little idea. You can put them onto fruition. You can build them onto little projects. Before you know it, you've made the world a better place. You've cured diseases. You've solved the mystery of the fucking crack banana. You've figured out what a present key or key present is for. You're just this amazing powerhouse of magic. And the only thing I would say to you, after you've tried out Wonder Memory, I would like to give you something. I'd like you to show me something amazing, like a special kind of product that you've worked on. And I can come back to you in 10 years' time and I can just look at you in the face and go, show me what you've got. <laughs> no problem. It's your thing. Hey. I know it's a bit early for rebuttals, but I mean, from what I can see here, he's basically going to give you something that then allows him to say every thought you've had from that point on is somehow therefore attributed to his products. You're just going to spend the rest of your life just paying him. Don't go anywhere near it. The problem you have right now is the fact that you have no money. Every single contraption that you've come up for so far has somehow already got out in the big wide world. That windmill-powered wind machine that you come up with, 
I mean, that, that should have been a seller, but somehow it already got in the market. I don't know how. That... <laughs> oh, fuck it. I, I'm losing this completely. <laughs> Pain of thought, God, straight fuck out it. the window. Do you know what it is? We need more of this. Slange. <laughs> <laughs> Did somebody say flange? I mean, why, you, why, are you not, why are you having so many problems getting your uh, getting your products to market? You have a mole. It's that fucking Igor. It just keeps stabbing. And everybody else writes up, uh, writes up your ideas and somehow get them out there before you. What you need is a way to sh get that man to shut the fuck up. What you need is a bad gag. <laughs> Put that on ego. You can keep this in your pocket at any time. Small, nimble, compact, easy to, <coughs> easy, easy to use. You just grab Igor, stick this over his head, and he will never talk. Admittedly, after a while, there's an oxygen problem. You probably need to get yourself another Igor. But until that time, he's not going to tell anybody what the hell you're up to, and you can finally get your products out to market before anyone finds out what they are. Bad gag. It's what you need. Thank you very much. Oh, great. Okay. This is going to be a mental product. All right. Because you're mad, let's face it. So you've got these amazing, wicked ideas flowing about the place, giving it the 1990s kid speak. Um, but of course, you're going to go hungry. And that's a pain in the arse. You know, you can't think on an empty stomach. And so, what I've got here for you will sound mental to the rest of the people at this table, but to you will make perfect sense. Because let's face it, we all need a bit of, how should I put it, some pork related items, but you need it at hand because you're busy going away. So I give you, that's right, the bacon vest. <laughs> you too can enjoy wondrous taste of bacon, that smell going in around it. You don't need to eat it, you just have the smell, it will fulfill your tummy, your tummy. Um, and basically your brain will just kick off and go and create some more amazing ideas. And all the time you've got it at hand, you just pick and choose, it's like fast food on the go, you got it there and then, no other person can come near you and this is your moment to become the mad, mad mental scientist who can purely deliver everything that anybody could ever want. I give you the bacon vest. Thank you. I'm just disappointed I missed the bag. Mag. No, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, the one thing I will say, both these products actually sound, like, just even as bag gag written down sounds hilarious. Bacon vest sounds fantastic. My concern is, is that you might enjoy these things, but once they wear out, will you ever remember them? Oh yeah, you'll remember eating some amazing food to create your own memory drug. As I said, it's pure and simple. You, you, ha you sign up with this man. He is going to take. <clears throat> he is going to take ownership of every idea you have due to the fact that you had it because of his wonder memory. Not true at all. The wonder memory pill is a one-off take, and it is up to you how you use it. It is not a licensable product. Which, to be fair, if you're going to spend the rest of your life just smelling a bacon, you're going to get nothing done anyway. You're just going to be hungry constantly. You're going or to masturbate nothing if you're on me, your I mind mean... a bit, except for trying to get yourself more bacon. You're just going to spend the rest of your life going, why the hell am I so hungry? That and you're never something... going to have another genius thought in your life. And all, during, all of this time, all of this is going on, and Igor is just out there blabbing his mouth and telling everybody exactly what you're up to. Which, at but... this point, I suppose... But yeah, nobody, nobody listens to Igor. They either shit scared of him or they just think he's a fucking loose cannon. Looney tunes, basically. So, Both of those things are true. So one thing I, I will put... Bag, go, sorry. If I do a bad guy, it's not required. He's a fucking mental case. Nobody's going to listen to him. I will say one more thing, and that's on the basis of, as I say, Wonder Memory is purely a product for you to use as you see fit. There's no license to us. The one thing I will say, however, is that if you go for the Read bacon vest, <laughs> have you seen my eyesight? I can't write small print. <laughs> Everything's fifteen point aerial. Yes. If, if you, you take a close vest, look, you, you take a close look at that contract. There is so much small print on there that the only way you can actually remember it all is to use the wonder memory. It's a fucking catch. 
Don't do it. Don't get it. That is true, but you can also remember everything, like the memory of your loved ones before you kill them in a fireball in your garage. Yeah, but then you've is got that, to, is that a side then effect? Then you've, you've got that sad moment. <laughs> no, it has Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. A side effect of the wonder memory is putting your loved ones in a garage and setting a light to it. You really, no, no, want no. To, you really want this. That's not the side effect. The side, that's the side effect of his mad tamperings because his memory is bad and he can't remember the formulas he made. <laughs> However, though, if he is a mad scientist, maybe that's just a front and he's got perfect memory. But does, this like whole, family. does, does the whole ditzy thing as a hobby? <laughs> so then he wouldn't need your product at all. You know, you just. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, I stand down. I stand down. Sign your life away or smell like a pig. The choice is yours. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, as, uh, as much as I would enjoy solving the mystery of crack bananas, I'm concerned of the impact of drugs on my amazing creativity. But the bad guy for Igor. I actually happened to fire Igor last month for humping my ratchet set again. So I don't need such a thing. But I am in absolute awe of such an amazing invention of the bacon vest. I am jealous I didn't invent it myself. Bacon inspires more sizzling ideas. I want a bacon vest, and I want a bacon vest now. Uh, I wish that was my pitch now. I get, yeah. I get the feeling. I get the feeling the bacon card in this game is a bit like AIDS and Cards Against Humanity. You just don't lose once it appears on the table. I genuinely thought, like, cards again. Uh, I thought you were going to say AIDS and cards against humanity. You really want it? <laughs> <laughs> well, technically. Yes. <laughs> wow. All right. Uh, you guys ready? You know what? I'm going to be a complete cunt. I'm going to get rid of every single motherfucker. And he's going to try again. But there's going to be a decent <laughs> card in this deck somewhere. See, see if you've got shit hand then it's clear it's you it's the problem wait a minute have you are we on the next game already have you got two cards that says shit hand oh that'd be great that saves you in toilet roll doesn't it what, you what ready for i am a dumpster diver <laughs> or okay. bin, or bin raker to us over here bin raker <clears throat> bin raker Da, da, da. Uh, I'm really like passionate here, as if I haven't been passionate all fucking night. All right, I'm in. I don't know why I'm in, but I'm partly fucking in. <laughs> are you? Are you all in? <laughs> are you giving it everything? I'm, I'm giving it about three percent. The rest is getting spent on bacon vests. I'm really confused why I've got a Zanes in the chat room. Can that dude just like change his name to something slightly different? Because it's giving me fucking like, herpes. <laughs> uh, You're the boy alone, I'm, I'm reading it and going, that doesn't sound like something he would say. <laughs> <laughs> it's confusing. Zanes, sorry mate, but I'm going to have to actually put a contract out on you. I don't like having two people with the same name. I knew two guys called Kevin once. One of them lives in a bin. Actually, I think it may be that guy with that card. <laughs> going to have to sell him something or that. <laughs> If his power's okay. better than yours, we're going to sub him in. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh. you've got... Oh, Jesus Christ, man. Can I pick another eight cards? Oh, Jesus Christ. I don't want to get martyrs, mate. The cards are just brutal and our imaginations are not drunk enough. We should have been drinking for four hours before we started this shit. <laughs> just not firing tonight at all. Uh, you say you're not firing, but the rest of us are doing no bad. <laughs> That's actually true. Oh, D's in the lead. <laughs> so, what, so, um... <laughs> hey, what are you doing? I'm going to get a card. You take my cards now. I just threw it off the table, but you didn't even notice. Okay, <laughs> I... Ah. You know what? Yeah. Fuck it. <laughs> Why are they not shuffling? So here's the thing. I think you should do it in an Australian accent this time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have two cards. You have no idea what the fuck they are? Okay, let's hear those bitches. I mean, bitches. 
First up, D then. <clears throat> so as a dumpster diver, collecting all your stuff, um, the biggest challenge that you've always got is storing your stuff. Now you're going to have certain stuff that you can kind of toss away, some things that you you obviously want to keep. That's why you're there in the first place. You're making a living. You're taking money home, basically, for your family so you can feed your family. But occasionally you're going to come across certain things in that dumpster that you just can't take home and you can't throw away. So you're going to have to put them somewhere. So for those events, I give you the baby tube. That's right. Every time you find a baby on that dump, I want you to put that in the baby tube and then hand it in at reception so we can dispose of it adequately. Thank you. <laughs> that spun back real quick. <laughs> Whew. All right, um, moving <laughs> this way on. From my esteemed colleague's amazing pitch about the frequent occasions where babies are found in bins, uh, although granted that has been heard in the past, um, I wouldn't think it would be so frequent that... Actually, let me let me start this again because I don't want to rebut on the man and start my own pitch. Um, <laughs> you want to dump, dumpster dive, you want to get your head in about the bin and start kind of picking out all the good bits. Now, the biggest problem with that is well, frankly, you have to either roll the bin over, which is fine if it's a small bin, but if it's one of the big steel ones, the big ones with all the good shit in it, you're thinking, don't really want to roll over because I can't put it back up right, and I'm a good conscientious citizen, even if I do like some free shit. And you're thinking, how do I get into that? How do I pick at it? How do I get all the stuff in without, you know, just get myself knee deep in muck and shit and everything else? And then you have an idea yourself. If only somebody had what something iconic, like Mission Impossible. Well, my friend, we have, and we come up with something that's going to help you go from the, the highest highs down into the lowest lows of those delicious bins, and you can find yourself dangling from any height and any bin without getting yourself knee deep in it. And you can just use your wee hands. You could maybe get two baby tubes on each finger and use them as little claws to dig through the things. Great product. But what you need, my friend, is a motherfucking jelly belt. The jelly belt will let you go down into the bin, get all the bits you want, and pull you right back up as soon as you're done picking out all the good shit and avoiding the scat porn and the dead hooker arms. <laughs> that's, that's it. <laughs> what, what, what scat porn? Don't you play anything with me, you bin diving <laughs> son of a bitch. <laughs> I, I don't know what you're talking about, honestly. Yeah. That's when jazz singers start uh, making smut. Stu, you don't want to watch it, mate. It's a lot of shit. Oh, fair this. Two girls, one bin is something I'd recommend to you. <laughs> I'll check out later. Is that two girls, one dump, now I'm thinking of it? <laughs> two girls, one loo roll. <laughs> D, in the chat, Jay just went, the fuck, D? <laughs> 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 oh... <laughs> it's simple. I don't know why we're wasting any time. I don't even need to make a pitch. We just need to do this. You need a plug beam. There's a plug beam you do exactly. Give me a minute and I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh... Okay, so here's the thing. You're raking through these bins and the one problem you have is, well, folk leave their bins open overnight. It pisses down with rain and the bin fills up with water and somehow you've got to trudge your way through this thing. And I mean, it just absolutely fucking, it's, it's, amazing. <coughs> it's, 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 it's horrible. What, what you can do, you could eat drown. What are you talking about, man? <clears throat> fucking jelly belt. It dangled from above. Oh, how just wished you? <laughs> Aye, I don't know. So here's what you do. You fire the beam plug. The beam plug automatically puts a hole right at the bottom of that bin, lets all the water out and then plugs it up. Suddenly, you can dive into that bin to your heart's content with no fear whatsoever of having to hold your breath and picking two random cards is a really fucking stupid idea, yo. <laughs> <laughs> I really want to try it. <laughs> I right. feel if you tried it, you'd end up coming out with a fucking marketing campaign, graphics and a website. <laughs> any any arguments to... Negative. <laughs> <laughs> Not a fucking sausage. No, the only thing is, I've just got fucking... What is it? Is it prom time dumpster, maybe? What's the family guy fucking... <laughs> that's right. <laughs> <laughs> it's just it's the only thing that's running through my head right now. 
All right, um, baby chips not going to happen. You want me to collect babies to take to your institute and then you do some weird ass shit with them? Whoa, 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 sorry. I'm you sorry. But I'm looking... the the stick. There's no institute here, sir. This is actually to legally protect you for when you find the babies in the dumpsters. This isn't but, for any experiments. But you said I was to take it to your reception, but you never stated what you're going to do with those babies. So no, you... I, I, I hand them over at the dumpster reception and then they're not my problem. It gives you complete legal immunity. So you're being a complete dick, is that no, 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 I'm reporting it to the correct authorities as stipulated on the terms and conditions when I first enter the dumpster zone. And do I get a fee for bringing back babies? No, at the moment it's it's not a profit making scheme because that would be improper. Oh, well, you, yeah. you can fuck off with that product then. Sinister intent, I think you're right on the money there, mate. What have I got here? Oh, <laughs> So I've got a drainage system for bins so I can get the good stuff, or I've got to go up to a tall building, jump off it with a jelly belt on, and just hope I don't pioing back up the way with nothing in my hand. You're not going, it's a jelly belt, you can set the tension on it. Have or you legal set, protection have, from murdering you, babies, that's all <laughs> Have you ever set tension on jelly before? You've not tried this, <laughs> this, is, this is space grade, this is NASA grade fucking jelly, this is a top booner. Yeah, but it's not going to work with my weight. I'm just going to go... I'm never going to get anything at the bin. Well, you've not tried their product. Their product can handle anything. We can handle anything from a gnat to an elephant. Are you saying I'm the weight of an elephant? No, it's just not I'm right. you're one of the two. <laughs> one of the two. That's, <laughs> that's, just fucking, that's just fucking disgraceful. Bizarrely, <laughs> the random plug beam sounds a bit <laughs> bad, like... Um, <laughs> Just the fact you drill it, empties all the shite and water and everything out it and get to the good stuff. So, plug beam goes for the... Oh. <laughs> what a farce. Yeah, well, that's an arc, you know, it makes sense. Jesus, man. Three hands of cards or something and that's the best they could come up with. <laughs> yeah, most, embar most embarrassing one of the night. <laughs> <laughs> okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. You need another two cards there. Okay. And you're going to need to use them on a paraplegic. Okay, then. Oh. <laughs> Good luck, guys. No, I mean, that's a fucking nightmare. <laughs> I'm feeling a certain sense of deja vu, but since we didn't actually record that one, I, I think we just need to go for it. Yep. So, uh,. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Um. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. We've lost you. That's not good. <laughs> Am I going to have to cut this to censor it, D? <laughs> My product is more universal than for that purpose, but I think that. A gentleman of a uh, paraplegic nature will go, do you know what? That sounds pretty good. Oh, crap, I've got to go first. Okay. I remember saying at the start of the night that, that uh, if you are easily offended... Please fuck off. Watch this video. <laughs> Switch. Yeah, Switch. it's, it's uh, off right now. Parental uh, advisory. For some reason, I don't know why. I don't, I don't know what's <laughs> giving me this feeling, but for some reason I'm feeling the need to kind of re... Reiterate that particular point that you know if you are easily offended by words, go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Toto Mundo, walk me through your product, so to speak. Well, <laughs> wow. Well, this the thing that I've got here is when you've got the kind of snowy weather comes in. You know, you can't really get about in a if you've lost your legs, you can't really get about in a wheelchair. And if you've lost your arms, it's, it's not exactly ideal. You can't join in some extreme sports. Ah, that's quadriplegic, mate. I've got my arms. Ah, it's either or. <laughs> you could have lost your legs, but got your arms, but you may have lost your <laughs> arms. Andrew, and still paraplegia your legs. is the lower legs. Paraplegia ah. is the lower. I, I think you should do some more research in this uh, industry <laughs> and idiot if you're going to try and sell products to 
Well, I think I think I like that public information message from the uh, giving you tight <laughs> industries. I think you'll find when you see the product, it'll answer all your needs. And I was right in the way I've invented it, so we'll be fine. Know your audience, audience is the only thing I would say. Just wait for you to your pitch. Okay. Um, <laughs> thanks for wasting a minute of my time to give you more time. That's great. Um, <laughs> Basically, if you want to do extreme sports, it's rather hard. So, how about a little bit of danger when there's that snow about, you stick yourself on the hill, and that's when you get the handcuff sled. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you strap in those Good arms. Thing is arms. <laughs> straight into the sled, handcuff yourself up. You're into the sled. You can use your arms, because they're next on the side of the sled, to basically steer where you're going, get a bit of air, do some loop loops, slam down, bang, you are the next Olympic gold medalist at the Par- Paralympic Games. Pack it out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, man. Okay, I need to take notes on this rebuttal. Uh... <laughs> That's tame, by the way. I don't know what's coming up next. <laughs> Mr. D. Uh... I'll help you to evil Zane has no morals when it comes to being offensive. I don't think that clarifies which one of us is he will say in fact, to be fair. Wait, what I like about this is we've got Zane and we've got, the, we've got the original official Zane Gaming, who is obviously mightier than Zane's, but I will point out that I do like Zane's because it literally went, you are evil Zane's, Zane, and I'm sitting going, that's so true. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh... Uh... Mr. D. So one of the most basic of human traits, I suppose you could say, is is empathy. Being empathetic and understanding other people's positions from your own is, is something that is being human at its core. Now you would possibly think that I'm thinking from an able-bodied person to the paraplegic person, but I'm not in this instance. I'm actually thinking the other way around. Because this is something for the paraplegic person, is to protect and help them. We know the struggles that they've got, the problems that they've got, the issues with lower limbs and not arms. (laughs) Sorry, I hate the fact that if somebody captured this, it'd be you saying that and me laughing. (laughs) For some people, their arms could be their legs. So, for whatever... Fucking arm <laughs> monkey boy is monkey like, man. <laughs> but I appreciate that there are struggles in life. You try to get through, and people are nice with you. But you're always going to kind of default back to the what if. I wish I had. I wish this would work. I wish those would work. Jeez, I wish you'd hurry up. <laughs> so, as much as you want to get on with life, you know you need to have that grumble. I'm not going to deny you that grumble at all. So you are allowed to be proud about the fact you're bitter with life. You can shout and scream about it as long as you've got the silent shield. You can moan and shout and complain and bitch about your legs as much as you want. You can say, my penis doesn't work and nobody will listen to you or give a (laughs) fuck. I give you the silent shield. Wow. Nobody gives a fuck about paraplegic people. You're a fucking monster. My penis oh. doesn't work. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm going to appeal to your nature. That is that you are a dude. Um, okay, you've got no legs. Not your fault. Not the end of the world and does not define you. But the one thing it does define you is you're an insatiable fucking cad. The one thing you want more than anything is a wee bit of smut. Now, we all like a bit of porn. <laughs> we all like a wee bit of, oh, there's some birds in the nude or some dudes in the nude, whatever you're into. Two dudes with food in the nude, whatever. Um, <laughs> the main thing you think there is, I get, I can get away with this and it's good. I can have a wee bit of a, a tumble fumble with myself. It's all good. But there's only one thing better than having some porn on hand is when you can be in public and with their device, you've got a little tiny screen, like a little tablet that's dedicated just to this service and you can keep it you can keep it wherever you want, keep it in your pocket, you keep it in your jacket, wherever you like. But you know what happens? You're out and about and you're going, this place is fucking boring. People keep going, oh, what happened to your legs? I don't give a fuck, that's not who I am, I'm an individual, I'm not, I'm not made of legs, fuck you guys. What I've got, 
when you guys ain't looking and I'm just keeping myself amused. But motherfucking danger porn. Keeps me happy, keeps me amused, and makes you boring guys fuck off and you're talking about my legs. Make up. You didn't invent the fuck cape, did you? <laughs> <laughs> Very probably, my friend. Very probably. <laughs> Oh, I'm pretty sure I get 63 fucks in on that. I think I get 63 fucks there, I'm pretty proud of that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, do we have any? I, I think the silent shield is not a good thing. Because that means you're just supposed to slip away Great into rebuttal. the... <laughs> Deep burn! <laughs> <laughs> I think your product is I not right. product's very good. <laughs> It's not very good because he just wants you to slip away into the background and not be seen. And that's not a human should be. So why disappear into the background when you could be at the forefront of basically extreme sports? And danger porn, Christ, if you go in a wheelchair or whatever you're doing and having a wank in public, that's danger enough. Why do you need some porn to do that for you? Exhilaration, my friend. You get that from being in public already. Well, who says you're in a wheelchair? It could be in some cybernetic amazing machine or doesn't even want to get about me. just want to be in the house being a fucking boss, lying about getting fed grapes. I think my <laughs> colleague has uh, completely missed the whole purpose of, of my uh, invention and my product. Uh, rather than actually being pushed to the back, you're pushed and you can be pushed right to the very front, even on the deepest, darkest days you've got. And you can shout and scream about the problems you've got and nobody will hear you or get pissed off with you. You can be right at the top of your game. Yeah, but nobody hears you doing anything. So you're just a kind of... That's a good voice, thing. Just a voice Stop in the background. Bitch. You're just a voice in the background. No, and there's no words, voice. In Let other words, me explain you, in to other you words, what the word silence means. Please so do, because you're not being clear so There is far. no sound. No sound, so, <laughs> so basically... Okay, 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 okay. Oh. I think we need to address the chat, Zane. <laughs> Are we having issues in chat? We're having having some spats in chat because we've got a double Zane action that's freaking everybody out. <laughs> Guys... We already had one guy that came in called Zane Gaming, who was obviously trying to take the piss. This guy's it's laughing, joking, and has the name Zane, so I'm not saying what the problem is for the guy. Like, Welcome Zanes! Exactly. <laughs> like, have welcome, you, buddy. Have you got a cold now? <laughs> I think, well, we're all Zanes now. Man. <laughs> Darak. He doesn't produce any content either, like, really, dude. If, if the guy wants to join in chat, I don't see why there should be an issue with him joining in chat, buddy. Also, he brought a Twix. What the fuck? That, that, ah, that, there, is, that there is a flag of friendship. As long as he's not a bee in the bell end. Yeah. No, the guy's, the guy's been a boss. Yeah. <laughs> guy's showing around and he's been cool. I don't see what the problem is, Eric. This, here, can I, can I explain this? Can I break this if down? If it comes a problem, actually... you can always give him the silence shield. <laughs> Zane, can I break this down into what this actually is, right? You know, uh, you ever know that thing where uh, women go to a party and they turn up and there's another girl where, there wearing the same dress, right? <laughs> and they both, and they get really upset and they get stressed out and, oh, for fuck's sake, and if somebody's going to get changed, I'm not happy with this. But seeing two dudes turn up at a party and they're wearing the same t-shirt, they're like, best fucking pal ever. That's what's happening right here. Who <laughs> 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 wearing the same t-shirt? Let's be friends! <laughs> Yeah. That's what it is. <laughs> For two seconds there, I thought you were trying to describe danger porn. No, mate, I'll take your side for that one later. <laughs> I'll look forward to that. <laughs> always an education with you. <laughs> you said it, big boy. End of the day, we're all here. End of the day, we're all here to have fun. Play nice, be nice, and you know how short my temper is when it comes to dickheads and chat. I get rid of them pretty damn quick. This guy's been fine, guys, so I don't see what the problem is. Also, he hangs out with me. That dickhead threshold is pretty high. <laughs> it's, it's a high threshold. <laughs> Shut up, Microsoft Colors. <laughs> you can't say shit. <laughs> oh, mercy. Uh, good I'm take. You'll screen her death, you motherfucker. <laughs> Zarak, it wouldn't be the same without you. We love you. Let's all have peace and love. Right, who's winning?
don't know, somebody choose. Okay. <laughs> I, I lost track there. I mean, I do have to say, almost immediately, a handcuff slide sounds like a great idea, apart from you tried to sell it to a man who you thought had no arms. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> to be fair, though, there's Can people who could have no arms, but their legs could be their arms. Next. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, can I just can I just ask what the fuck does that mean? <laughs> I'm well, they, they, they have to use their feet as their hands to basically do stuff like That's write or draw. Paraplegia is a loss of your legs. You've come to the wrong convention. Yeah, but there's are <laughs> people who have to walk in their hands. Yeah, that's acrobats. That's different. <laughs> okay, I am going to go slightly tangential here. But... That's what happens when you drink too much fucking whiskey. You lose all fucking sense of reality. I'm going to go slightly tangential here, but the idea of danger porn, the, the problem with that is that it brings up the idea in my mind of the danger wank, mm -hmm. which I'm sure, well, I, hey, I know you, some, you can't I, have a really good danger wank without the danger porn. I see, I know some of you are aware of what that is, just to explain to anyone who's watching who doesn't, a danger wank is essentially when you go into a disabled bathroom, shut the door behind you, start pulling it. Sorry, start jerking it because you also <laughs> need to pull the emergency handle, handle and try and finish off before someone comes to help you. And the problem with that is I am actually disabled. So if they just do come to the door, they're just going to pull it open and see a disabled guy with his dick out struggling in a toilet. And there's not really much danger there. So I know it's not exactly what your product's selling, but you know, it's, it's kind of falling into the same category. You're just going to see... Uh, you're, you're just going to presume... I'm walking, uh, that I am walking, I'm rolling down the street, having a wank from my danger porn, I'm just going to presume that I'm mentally disabled as well as physically. Therefore, <laughs> the fact that D knows me so well and knows my rants so well and the fact that I need to go off on one on quite a regular fucking basis, a silence shield would actually be quite handy for me whether I'm paraplegic or not, so I'm going to kind of go for that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Man. A fucking tough gig. Uh, I'm sorry, I genuinely thought just appealing to your horny bastard self regardless of your legs was the way to go. <laughs> hey, what have we got? Oh, Zane's on the catch up like a motherfucker! Zarak, good to see you back. I love you, buddy. Bye! <laughs> D, I just, uh, I just um, said that the chat with all the Zane stuff was funny because it's like a Spanish soap opera, and I went Maria, Maria, <laughs> Maria, and I went to go por qué, but it wouldn't let me. And Jay finished, and went por qué Maria. Don't worry, bro. You're fucking ten points, Jay. Por qué Maria? Y tú es pequeño, chiquita. Maria. Okay, what, Maria. What have we got? <laughs> Ah, <laughs> oh, so good. I Jay, Jay just went up with my estimations of like Bostonists. That is awesome. <laughs> I think at some point before we finish this, we need to have a round where all of us just pick random cards. I think that's yes. a great idea. In fact, I think, if you want. <laughs> I think we have a round where all four of us pick random cards in the chat, decides who wins. Okay, sounds like a plan. Like idea. Yeah. Doing... <laughs> Are you actually still trying to communicate with aliens? I don't know what the fuck that says. <laughs> Two seconds. Yeah. Not this. This way. Way. Get the arrows pointing that way. I'm, he's pointing out the way not to go, which is really confusing. I'm confused. The sign says not this way, but the arrow says this way. My mind's telling me no, but my body, <laughs> my body is telling me yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see nothing wrong with the little bitch gun. <laughs> What do you do if your carbon monoxide alarm is going off? Apart from die. Leave your hey, house. <laughs> check the batteries and run away. Is your, is your alarm going off? Yeah. Yeah, I would leave the fucking house, bro. Um, got a lighter. 
Nah, seriously, spark up a lighter. If it doesn't ignite, there's no oxygen in the room, and you're dead. See, that's pretty fucking odd, man. I would be watching that shit. This is going to be a very viral stream if you die live on it in Technicolor. Yeah, that's a challenge and a half. That is, that has got to be an eye on fucking ridiculously impossible. <laughs> Do you know what? Especially from memory. If you genuinely see me slumping, phone the police, <laughs> ambulance, ambulance what, and fire brigade. What right. is it? How, how yeah, long has it been since you put batteries in that fucking thing? It's been a long time, so I mean, it's quite possible it is that, but it just went off twice and I've changed, I've just removed and reseated the batteries and reset it, so. I was off again, I'll shit myself. Right, I'm, I'm just to be clear with you, man, I'll just, I'll, I'll worry about you, so can you just make sure that live, like in a podcast, you're taking a register, my, my kind of, that I, I do care about you, don't want anything to happen to you, but can I also have your laptop? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you, can have, you can have all my tech and music-related memorabilia. Yay! I spent a long time rebuilding that shit. Oh <laughs> it's been four days rebuilding the fucker, can I have it? <laughs> and all my silver. <laughs> can, I, can I have your goddamn cougar around? <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Uh, um, is this the okay. last one? Are we, are we doing random ones, or everybody? Is this this uh, one? Jay, can I just say so far that like, I'm either drawing my logo really badly, or or you're insulting a lot of people. Yeah, yeah the Wall Street Journal was about to do an article <laughs> on me. <laughs> uh, <that's laughs> because really... suddenly this is this is yeah this is not going the way I kind of hoped it would. <laughs> <laughs> And then there's kind of bits in here and it can just kind of... I... Yeah, can we just pretend this didn't happen? <laughs> <laughs> so can I suggest that this is the, the last round? It is half eleven after all. Shall we just go for it? Shall we make this the last one? The final one? Right. Shall we make this yes. one the... Uh, Randomisation? The chat room one. Okay, let's do it. So... Pick a card, throw it on the table. We'll all pick two random cards that were pack. Done. Back. I'll be honest, it's not going to make any fucking difference, to be honest. Oh. Yeah, so you can kind of see them, can you? you flip them over, stick them on the table, shuffle them. Oh, <laughs> I know, I didn't, I didn't, I've only seen the top card, obviously, but... Oh, you're, asking, you're asking me to make sense. I don't know what the fuck's going on. Um, I've been like sitting here trying to put the fires in the fucking chat room. <laughs> Would you like a hand there? Hold on, hold on, hold on. There we go. Got it, got it, got it. My retardation is only limited to one card at this point. Go take your top two cards. Top two cards. So do we, get, do we get to look at them first once we've got them, or is it just a matter of you got to come up with nope, as soon as you flip them? them over on the spot. Yeah, you have you have two <laughs> so, minutes. So, to, two so minutes no preemptive. Yeah, you have two minutes to sell. You don't know what your cards are until your two minutes starts. <laughs> uh, who won the last round? The monster. That gives you the luxury of do you want to go first or last? Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to go first. <laughs> brave man, brave man. I like it. All okay. right, so do you want to re reiterate the chat room involvement? Yeah, I think the chat room is on board. I, I, I think they've got the idea. So all four of us are going to play in this round. All four of us don't have a fucking clue what the two cars that are sitting in front of us are. And... At this point, <laughs> what we're selling to either. <laughs> and it's up to you guys. Once we're all finished, give a shout who you think won think who who you think's won in the round. Okay. <clears throat> Let's go. Start with Mr. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it? Oh <laughs> <laughs> Why wasn't that there four hours ago? Fuck me. <laughs> Fuck me, the tie dildo would have worked with that as well. <laughs> it would have been poific. 
All right. So, <laughs> as a milk, you're always on the go. <laughs> you're, if you're not, and I don't mean to be misogynistic, but I'm just thinking I'm giving a kind of a, a, an accurate sort of representation of what goes but on. That's who I am. <laughs> <laughs> If you're not juggling <laughs> different kind of uh, doing the washing, you've got the, the, the children, you're the MILF, remember, that's what this is, is kind of implying, that you look after the children as well. Um, so sometimes you are that MILF, but you feel underappreciated. You're, you're not getting that attention as a true MILF thoroughly deserves. You don't have a, a kind of a 15, 16 year old son who's Aww. legal age friends uh, all want to kind of boff you. So um, you're kind of, you're, you're feeling underappreciated because you're certainly not getting it from your middle-aged husband who can't get it up anymore. So the only way that you can kind of get any fun whatsoever these days is to actually get involved with the toilet egg. The toilet egg, you can be discreet and go to the toilet, slip it in, have your fun under two minutes. It's as long as it takes you to do a shite. Ladies, we all know that you like to do your quick shites. So when under the two minutes, you have had your fun. You come straight back out. It's still in there. You don't have to make out that you're put it away. It's still up there for the next time that you want to use it. I give you the toilet egg. <laughs> done and done. You clearly know too much about toys. And eggs. Exactly. <laughs> well, I can't argue with that because I've no idea what the fuck I'm going to argue with the bathroom. <laughs> but you're the MILF. And the MILF needs a passion rope. Sometimes the husband's away on holiday, away in business. Sometimes you're away in business. You may be a MILF, you may have kids, but sometimes you're just thinking to yourself, sometimes I think I should maybe just get the passion rope out. There's a postman. I'm going to get him. There's the receptionist at the swanky hotel, me being an independent woman working in. And I'm thinking to myself, I need the passion rope. And I'm thinking to myself, what do I need? Passion rope. I need myself a passion rope. I need a passion rope. <laughs> ah, shite. I'm on the wrong side of the board. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, if in doubt, play an untuned guitar. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm playing on the wonderment of earlier on I wasn't really buying any of these products, but when they sang, I wanted them, so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even sure where to start. <laughs> What did you get? I have not yet found out. Ah, uh, let me see. Let Passion me see, rope actually should have sold itself, but I'm too stupid to make it work. <laughs> see, and you've had practice at this tonight. This is your third <laughs> shot, so you should have this in the bag, quite frankly. Ah, uh, I mean, to be honest, I this should be quite straightforward. Um, I suppose the, the the question is the first question is. What exactly is is a MILF? Really? <laughs> Redefining the genre, are we? <laughs> a MILF, as we can tell, is a mother I'd like to fuck. Mothers, whether married, separated or divorced. That male individual sees his physical attractive enough to want to have sexual intercourse with them. Just because they're moms doesn't mean they don't need a spark in their love life if they ever breastfed with their really responsive nipples and a core full of erectile <laughs> tissue in their breasts. <laughs> the one's a good shape of worked at regaining control over their vaginas. Mills are usually really careful about birth control. They know accidents happen, but they take responsibility. This is a fucking steps. educational video. Did you write this down? All oh, right, he's okay, it's actually a thing on the screen. Okay, coming, it's going to come. Hold on, he's using, it, eh? hold on, he's using he's using production against us. They want to fuck with abandon and with no romantic complications for their under 19 year old, under 19 family. A MILF is a mother that is sexually desired. And what does that mother need? Of course, there is only one thing that it's that mother be. needs and that has got to be the one, the only bullet pony. <laughs> the bullet pony. What exactly is a bullet pony? Well, the bullet pony is this is the thing. This is the number one. Think of... Can I swap cars? Because I've got a perfect thing for that. Rampant think, rabbits in. Yeah. Thank you. Think of... <laughs> he forgot to talk to me here. Think of the random rampant rabbit. Bit bigger. 
Or do you want? Fill it for and, me. And can deliver bail. <laughs> oh, well, I've got no See, I think the time you're looking for there is dear me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear, dear me. Um, I've, I've got, I've got no songs. Got no weird. I was hoping you were going to bust out that vicious gangster rap. <laughs> I, I got no songs. To be fair, if I did that, I'd need to like ice tea or body care, and that's just a place to go. Seventy-three times, you'll be fine. <laughs> no, I can't even go there. Otherwise, I get arrested. Um. So yeah, you got, you got a mouth. I've wasted twenty seconds talking about. Swap port for some reason. I'll um, give you it back. Thanks very much. So we've got a MILF there. I'm sure everyone's had their curiosities about a MILF, whether it's soccer moms or anything else like that. And maybe it means something else. Maybe it's um, mom I'd like fun with or something like that. But either way, they're going to need a fantastic product. And the product we have especially dedicated to MILFs across the globe is the right mixers. I've had four blinders to me, man. Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> this game should only be played this way forever. Start your origins. When, when you need your MILF to be flexible in that one key area of it, you know is going to be really, really awkward to reach. We're going to bring you the ring exercise video with three with the free tie dildo and the condom avalanche in case you need a little bit extra protection and to clean up any mess that may happen during those exercise periods. I give you the one, the only to mills across the world ring exercise. <laughs> Over a chat. Oh, I think that's the real problem oh, here. Shit, man. I, I have no rebuttal. Can you Summers and get any one of these four products? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I think uh, Zane's in the chat room. It's Roman Summers looking for ideas. <laughs> he needs to strike fucking gold. <laughs> Each one could be danger porn oh. in its own way. <laughs> he said to me. If I was female and had had a child, I would buy every single one of these appliances. <laughs> that is absolutely freaky that every you single cannot... one of those without fucking, yeah. D, can I just ask, as a male, why can't you have these products? <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> um, you, know, you never get a little bit lonely, a bit squirrely? <laughs> get squirrely. <laughs> just pop a digit up, it's fine. <laughs> I just don't like the idea of an egg-shaped object. <laughs> that is true, that, that's the boundary of the calibre of the bullet. <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> If it's a pony, it's a wee bit weird on the horse, that's for sure. Do you know what? I'm going to bite. You're not going to tell me a bullet ponies are actual things, Ed. <laughs> I bet you as I can't you Google that. Each of these things will appear somewhere. Urban Dictionary. Passion, passion rope must be a thing. That sounds like something like BDSM kind of and Summersy type stuff. Okay, we have nothing for bullet pony. Passion rope or get a Street Fighter 5. Is a passion rope throw? Yeah. We have nothing for rig exercise. Right, I've, I've patented that, alright, that's mine. <laughs> that. I think you're welcome to that patent, good sir. I think you'll find that'll sell well for both male and female. <laughs> I'm on a winner with that one. Oh, we've got Zarax voting for me and Zane's is voting for me. Zane's just verifying it's a heart shaped noose, <laughs> fashion rope. <laughs> we have a winner. It's down to Jay. Jay's got to call it one way or the other. If Jay calls somebody else, then we need a fourth person in the fucking chat. <laughs> well, I, th I thought it was two for you. Oh, they're right. There's only three people in the chat. Yeah. We have a winner. Well, there's three Yay! regulars, unless, unless some mystery dude pops out. I just lost connection, that was good timing. Ay, 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 I do need to... <laughs> oh, that's not the right one, however. Zacko fucked off, that's what it is. That, that is a tweet to... Yeah, man, where did this save to? Ah, Zacko kind of disappeared again after. 
<laughs> you crafty a fuck. <laughs> a bit of buttering of the J. <laughs> that no, that, that, ass that, shit. Yeah, that was not, not intentional, but hey, if it works, man, I'll take it. Uh, let's see, what I am a big... Oh, what I found addressing was the fact The fashionable that... peg toilet? It's the best toilet. You'll be honest with you, it's the best toilet. We got the most fabulous toilet. It's got a bullet pony. It's got snake oil. It's got bitch guns. It's, I mean, it, it, honestly, it's fabulous. So, D, apparently you came up with an actual product. Or at least an actual <laughs> thing. I was convinced fashion rope was going to win that. If someone was a pee and has a time to sit on an egg-shaped yolk after something like that. <laughs> What what are you peeing? Who's peed and left the toilet? What? And we have just, no am I, am I, I mean, we don't share our peeing habits. Have I been not peeing solid objects or something? <laughs> what? Does anything make any fucking sense of that? Maybe it's to see if you got I a, don't a, a, an egg in the, 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 the thing. I don't, you urethra? I don't really want to say either way if I make any sense of that. <laughs> you know, I pee often, and I've never settled. I've left pee settled. It never went egg shaped. So chat is chat is voting for Vando K as being the winner, and I think we'll give a a nominatory second prize to D for the only one that actually came up with an existing <laughs> <laughs> an existing <laughs> thing. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so on the basis that I've got three cards. Zen, you've got two. Stu, you've got three. And D, you have four. You have the flip of the table. I would suggest. I can't get get me one last chance, but I can't. I can't get connected at the moment. No, so I get you flip. <laughs> you want me to flip it on your behalf? Uh, this is my last chance getting back into the table. In which case, I fail attempt one, two, and three. So it's looking like uh, go flip that table, sir. Boom! Riding the kisser. Straight to the moon. Well, that was fucking weird and funny. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Uh, also, so, guys, you can you can also download the uh, Passion Rope theme tune uh, on iTunes in about <laughs> half an hour. Uh, <laughs> you think I'm joking? <laughs> I'll be on YouTube in 15 minutes. I'll get D to engineer it. <laughs> okay, so next week would have been the normal podcast. However, if we can ever find a way... To avoid doing the normal podcast, we will do so. <laughs> and it just so happens that next week, uh, the third DLC comes out for Ghost, Wild, uh, Ghost Recon Wildlands. Oh. So I have got a feeling that we will be hitting that <laughs> and seeing whatever delights that happens to bring upon us. And the following week, we will get back to the normal podcast where we're just generally sh talking to shite and... Talking do shite, talking say shite, and generally pretty much do what we've done for the past two hours, except without a game board in the middle of it, to be perfectly honest. So, I get a hold of us there. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> you want to sell shit while we're here? Uh, I do, I always want to. Um, so, <laughs> you can find my random bollocks at www.ratworks.net. We are moving into doing business production shit. Um, which is a great advert for any business, let's be honest. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, ratworks.net, you pick up 10 years at best t-shirts. You can pick up Zane Gaming hoodie, I believe. We have an official hoodie with the Zane Gaming logo that's impossible to draw in Tabletop Simulator. Um, <laughs> that's one half of my my behaviour. Um, also, as as you've experienced tonight, a musical genius, um, myself and the DRD down there are two halves of one whole not the hole that needs a ring egg, um, or what the fuck that was. Uh, <laughs> and we are uh, an outfit called Stereo Vandals. We've got a whole bunch of tunes on. We just dropped a new remix this week, belonging to a Korean pop group called Girls' Day, which is pretty sweet. Um, we've got a new remix EP that we're featuring on for another band. Lots of cool stuff happening there. So hit up ratworks.net and hit up stereovandals.co.uk. New website coming, and you can also get us on facebook.com uh, forward slash ratworks graphics and facebook.com forward slash stereo vandals that's my oh, shit awesome and guys in the chat 
G especially, I know it bugs absolute tits out of you every time we do the, the awkward silence in order to finish the show. You'll be so glad to know that I have come up with an alternative. We have got a new way to end each and every show. And here's what it is. We're going to 